let's take a look at the starting offensive lineup for the Atlanta Falcons, coached by Lehman Bennett. Billy Rickman, a 5'11", second-year man from Louisiana Tech, has the split end. They go with their number one draft pick, Mike Chen, a rookie at left tackle. He's from Michigan. Dave Scott from Kansas, three-year veteran at left guard. Jeff Van Note, ten-year veteran from Kentucky at center. R.C. Thielman is the right guard, second-year man from Arkansas. Warren Bryant in his second year from Kentucky at right tackle. The tight end, unheralded, but a good, strong tight end, Jim Mitchell, tenure veteran from Prairie View. The running back, Pascal Stanback, in his fifth season from Tennessee. And Bubba Bean in his second year from Texas A&M. The flanker back, Wallace Francis, six-year veteran from Arkansas A&M. And the quarterback, Steve Barkowski, in his third year from California, big 6'4", 213. For the Steelers, Offensively, John Stallworth, wide receiver, the interior line, John Kolb, left tackle, Sam Davis, left guard, Mike Webster at center, Jerry Mullins, right guard, Ray Penny, starting in place of the injured Larry Brown at right tackle, Benny Cunningham, the tight end. Rocky Blyer and Franco Harris are the running back, Lynn Swan, wide receiver, and Terry Bradshaw in his ninth year, 6'3", 215 from Louisiana Tech, quarterbacking the Pittsburgh Steelers. In our broadcast booth, Lou Craig. And J.D. Fogarty are the player identifiers. Our producer is Tom Leslie. And at the controls, Tim Bars and Greg Benson. Did I get those names right? I wonder who those strange guys were back there. Did you know them, Myron? I don't think they were strange. They look normal to me. <laughs> Fred Steinfurt, who's been working out at Penn State this past week, trying to improve his field goal kicking, will kick off right to left for the Atlanta Falcons. And Pittsburgh goes deep with Alvin Maxson. Larry Anderson and Rick Moser. As we view this ball game for you, they'll kick off right to left. And the seats are not filled completely, but the crowd is almost all in here for the start of this ball game. The wind is gusting up to between 15 to 20 miles per hour, and it just took the ball off the tee. So Steinford comes up to set the ball up there, pat it, comfort it just a bit before it goes into action. The ball responds by toppling off the tee once again. Steinford is from Boston College, 5'11", 180, three-year veteran. We first saw him when he was with the Oakland Raiders. Now, Billy Rickman is holding the ball. Steinford, left footer, kicks it. Pretty good. Down to the goal line. Anderson, out over the five, to the 10, the 15. He's hit, breaks the tackle, gives ground, and falls backwards. Steve Stewart came down and gave him a mighty hit. And he stayed on his feet, and then he toppled over at the 12-yard line. A blocker, a dealer blocker, brushed Steve Stewart. And he sort of uh, was upended, and his foot came high into the air to knock down Larry Anderson. He knocked him down with a kick, I do believe. In their front four, Jeff Yates, Jim Bailey, Mike Lewis, Jeff Merrill. Linebackers, Kuykendall, Pennywell, and Brazina. Pittsburgh, wide out to both sides. First play of the ball game for the 12-yard line. Hand off to Franco, puts his head down and cracks into a crowd of people right up the middle. Takes the ball to the 14-yard line. At the bottom of the play, Jim Bailey. The left tackle, nine-year veteran from Kansas, and Robert Pennywell, the middle linebacker, a third-year veteran from Grambling. On the left corner, Roland Lawrence, a six-year veteran from Tabor. The right corner, Rick Bias in his fifth year from Wayne State. The strong safety, Frank Reed, in his third year from Washington. The free safety, a rookie, Tommy Pridemore from West Virginia, who got the starting nod when Ray Easterling was knocked out of action for the season. We have a double-wing situation with the slot back close on the left side. That's Flyer coming in motion. The handoff goes to Harris, and again, he's in trouble up the middle. He's at the 15-yard line and no further. And the Atlanta defense is being tested in the middle. It responds with Mike Lewis getting the tackle, an eight-year veteran from Arkansas AM&M. So, okay, the Steelers, notwithstanding their efficient passing attack this season, uh, choose not to put the ball in the air when they're starting out at their own 12-yard line, and that may make sense. But now they've got a passing down coming up with third and seven. Wilson Fowina is in there in a three-man line. They have four linebackers as Dewey McLean comes on. Now watch them. They could be doing some stunning in this passing run. Here they come across and make contact, but who will be charged? A lot of bouncing around. Now here's what they've got. Jeff Yates, Wilson Fowina, the second-year man from San Jose State, and Jeff Merrill, a four-year veteran from West Virginia, in that three-man rush, the linebackers are Kuykendall, Pennywell, Brazina, and McLean. The officials are standing around the football at the 15-yard line, getting set to render a decision. Illegal procedure against Pittsburgh, pulling Atlanta offside. Five-yard mark-off against the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
So Pittsburgh moving left to right now has the ball just outside of its own 10-yard line. The down is number three with 12 yards to go. Ball game just underway at Three Rivers. Wilson Fawina came down on center Mike Webb to then point it to the left side of the Steeler line. Davis or perhaps... Uh, Cole, but the mic, uh, the ref mic is folly, so we don't know which one with That's the count to the right, and we've got Stallworth flanking out to the left. Quarterback is Bradshaw. Here is Bradshaw backing up, and he throws to the far side. Leaping catch. Stallworth at the 23-yard line should have the first down. He does. He is hit by Rick Bias and brought down on the far side of the field. So a great play. The pass by Bradshaw was directly on the mark, and Stallworth made one of his patented leaping catches, and Bias brought him down. The first down for Pittsburgh at its own 23. So, okay, here goes that explosive Steeler offense. It'll be interesting to see if Ray Penny filling in for Larry Bryant at right tackle can do the job. We'll keep an eye on that side of the line. First down 10 at the 23-yard line. Bradshaw steps under center. Normal set in the backfield. Wide outs both ways. Hand off to Blyer. Coming off the right side. Over the 25. Belts into a man and goes down at the 29-yard line. Rocky Blyer that time had pretty good blocking support as Roland Lawrence and Tommy Prybor came over from the secondary to make the stop on the near side of the field. Looking down, he picked up a good strong five yards, almost six yards. Second down and the long four to go as they place the football at the Pittsburgh 28 and a half yard line at the near hash mark. It is second down, four and a half. Mike Webster goes over the football for the Steelers. First period of the ball game, no score. They move left to right across your radio dial. Again, Blyer is in the slot to the left side. Swan flanking right, handoff goes to Franco, leaping over the right tackle, rather the left tackle position, across the 30 and up to the 34 yard line. Heikendahl and Pridebor got the tackle. Harris that time going off the left side, leaped over the tackle position, took the ball to the 34 for first down, number two. Yes, leaping over Brazina and Pennywell. Great running by Franco. The Steelers moving. Pittsburgh at its own 34 yard line. First down, 10 yards to go against the Atlanta Falcons. Now the Falcons punch a lot of people up front. And the handoff goes to Blyer. And Blyer is tripped up. From down in underneath came the arm of Jeff Yates. As Blyer crossed the line of scrimmage, he was tripped up and went flying over the 35-yard line, almost to the 36. They will mark the ball at the 35 and a half. Gain of about a yard and a half, second down, eight and a half yards to go. Jeff Yates, Jim Bailey, Mike Lewis, and Jeff Merrill up front. Kuykendall, Pennywell, and Brazina are the linebackers in the regular 4-3. Now they pull a man up on the left side. That gives them two backers set in the middle. As they go into that stack over situation, Bradshaw firing out to the left side, completes the pass to Betty Cunningham at the 42-yard line, and Cunningham is wrestled back behind the 40. Rick Bias and Greg Brazina went to work on Cunningham defensively, and they're going to mark the ball at the 42-yard line, short of a first down, but the first completion of the afternoon to Cunningham. And the official marking the football at first looked like he was going to take a couple of yards away from Benny. He ended up taking perhaps only a yard away from him. The Steelers facing third down with a full two yards to go. Don't you forget and go home after the ball game because we have that talk show down in the Steeler offices right after you get out of the locker room. Mm -hmm. Did you say I shouldn't uh, go home? Yeah, don't, uh, you yeah, don't, remember don't, to stick around? Don't go home and leave me there alone. I'll tie a string to my finger. <laughs> All right, they've got both ends tight to give the ball to Franco. He rambles off the right side, fights his way over the 45, brings the ball to the 47-yard line. Brazina and Bridebor get the tackle. Now you're seeing a very balanced Pittsburgh attack working in a most diligent manner against the Atlanta defense. Nothing exciting, nothing gaudy, uh, no gadget plays, just straight, hard-nosed football trying to establish their offense against one of the better defenses in the NFL. The running backs are Breyer and Harris. Stallworth wide left, Swan flanks right to the near side. Quick pitch back to Harris, running with blocker. Bly cuts inside the block over the 50 and drives down to the Atlanta 46-yard line. The play carried to the far side of the field. Blyer gave him a block. Sam Davis was out there blocking. Brazina and Pridemore, both of whom have been busy, bring him down at the Atlanta 46-yard line, a gain of eight yards. Brazina made the tackle, but he was also the object of Rocky's block, and don't believe Rocky didn't block him. He knocked him flying, but he ended up at the right spot to make the tackle. Rocky's block still made the run possible. 
at the Atlanta 46-yard line. First down 10. This time, Blyer in the slot right to give to Harris. Running to the right. Finds nowhere to go. Cuts back and picks up about two yards. Make it three yards on the play. Kuykendall and Brazina close in on Harris to bring him down near the 42-yard line. Wait till they uncover the football. It is a first down. That is the fourth in a row for Pittsburgh, the nose of the football at the Atlanta 42. Now, if you watch the clock, you will see that Pittsburgh has had this football for six minutes and 20 seconds. And they, of course, started back at their own 12-yard line. No score in this ball game as yet. Bradshaw, the quarterback, wide outs both ways, hand off Blyer. Blyer looks to the opening just off the left side and finds little running room as he is met by Robert Pennywell, the middle linebacker, and Greg Brezina give Rocky about a yard to the 41-yard line, and now they hustle Fawina back in there and bring Dewey McLean in, and they'll go to a 3-4, three, three down lineman, the 33 defense, or what they feel is a passing down, second and nine. Franco has banged out 20 yards on five carries for a nice four-yard average. Out of the huddle, Swan comes to the right. Stallworth sets up to the left. Bradshaw steps under center. The tight end is Benny Cunningham in a strong right formation. Bradshaw back deep, deep, looking, looking, looking. There it goes. There's Cunningham. Takes it at the 22, over the 20, and down to the 18-yard line. Roland Lawrence makes the tackle. Benny Cunningham coming off the tight end post is shaken up after taking that pass and going to the Atlanta 18-yard line. The big dive from Clemson is injured, but Pittsburgh has a first down at the Clemson, or rather at the Atlanta 19-yard line. No score in the ball game. Timeout down on the field. We'll be right back. Rennie Cunningham now being helped with a Steeler bench. He suffered an injury to his left knee. That pass from Bradshaw to Cunningham was good for 22 yards. And what you had to admire there is Bradshaw's touch. It was just a feathery pass. Pers placed perfectly at just the right speed as he lofted it over the linebacker. It's just a beautiful pass. The Steelers now at the 19-yard line, first down. Randy Grossman replaces Benny Cunningham in his fifth year from Temple, 6'1", 215. We give away size, four inches in height and about 30 pounds in weight. But a scrapper and a man with good hands. All right, the handoff to Harris finds the big hole to the left, cuts back against the grain, goes over the 15, and he may have the 13-yard line. Jeff Yates gets the tackle. Harris headed left and then cut back against the flow of the play and took it inside the 15 down to the 13-yard line, and it's a gain of six yards. Second down and four yards to go. Harris on the afternoon, seven carries, 30 yards. Franco that time with three blockers to the far outside, taking the Atlanta defense with them, and Franco finding nice running room as he cut inside. Franco Harris and Rocky Blyer, the running backs for the Pittsburgh Steelers. This has been a drive. Hand off to Harris, running to the right, then cuts back, sees the opening down over the 10, and he's at the 8-yard line. Fulton Kuykendall and Robert Pennywell make the stop. It is a first down for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Harris just feeling those holes beautifully, running to the right that time, making a cutback, not showing great speed, just using that tremendous Harris power to take the ball to the 8-yard line, and that is first down number 6. He is killing them with plays that develop as sweet with a lot of blocking to the outside and then cutting inside without the blocking. Franco is killing them with that, that ability to change directions on a dime. Myron, they've had the ball for nine minutes. <laughs> nine minutes. Here is Bradshaw at the eight-yard line, giving it to Blyer. Blyer running to the left, and he dives to the five-yard line. Penalty markers go down on the play. Greg Brazina and Jim Bailey getting the tackle for the Atlanta Falcons. And somebody spotted something in there. And the Falcons committed a personal foul. Well, Fulton Kuykendall, the 6'5 linebacker, I, was the, I believe was the man who came on with a late hit. That's a first down at the two-and-a-half-yard line, half the distance to the goal from the five. As we hustle, T. Bell onto the field. Steve Corson has come on the field. The two wide receivers come out. Now we've got uh, Jerry Mullins 
lined up as a tight end. Randy Grossman is a tight end. And we send T. Bell from the wingback position in motion. Handed off to Blyer. Blyer with a great move. He was caught at the five-yard line, reaching out. It appeared to be Fulton Kuykendall had him to the ankle. Stumble kept his balance like a ballerina and got back to the four. Robert Pennywell nailed him. So there is a loss of about a yard on the play as Blyer was tagged by the ankle at the five by Kuykendall and continued to balance himself on one leg and then finally was brought down at the three-and-a-half yard line. The next ballerina who gives a performance like that will be fired for drinking. Wow. <laughs> Steve Bell, wing back right, two tight ends. Here is a fake by Bradshaw. He's back throwing it too high for Steve Bell down in the end zone. Big rush on Bradshaw. Tommy Prybor was covering in the end zone. Greg Brazina was firing in there. Pennywell was firing in, and Bradshaw had to unload that pass a little high. It went into a cameraman's equipment. Third down now, three and a half yards to go. T Bell out. Moon Mullins out, and we go back with our regular offensive alignment. Five oh eight to play in the first quarter. At the three-and-a-half-yard line, here's Bradshaw flipping the sharp one out to the right, and it is too low for Stallworth as he unloaded it again. And again, that rush was on. They were confounded by the defense. Wilson Paulina was coming in. Dewey McLean was coming in. And in the meantime, Frank Reed was covering, and the pass was thrown too quickly and too sharply low. So Roy Torello will try for a three-pointer. Great Coke with holding. Looks like they've moved to about the 11-yard line. The official has blown the whistle. The Steelers have had possession of this football for almost 10 minutes. They're five seconds shy of 10 minutes in this first period. Yes, they drove from their 12-yard line with the opening kickoff. The field goal attempt will be uh, 21 yards. Colquitt, the rookie from Tennessee, is the holder. Snap, the ball is down, and Chirella kicks it. 21-yard field goal is good. The Steelers take a 3-0 lead, and Steelers football continues after this timeout. Want a tough snowblower that's going to save you time and effort all winter long? Then get a John Deere snowblower from Austin Hardware. The rugged 8-horsepower model cuts a wide 26-inch path, and the new 10-horsepower blower clears a 32-inch swath in a single... Word comes up from the bench that tight end Benny Cunningham will not play the rest of this ball game. He has an injury to his left knee, and obviously it's not a minor injury when you make a decision like that at this early point in the ball game that he will not play. You know, it's not just a slight bruise. The Steelers have lost Benny, but they take a three to nothing lead. And uh, that touchdown drive, or rather field goal drive, required 18 plays. Here's Roy Jarella to kick off. Benny Cunningham is going to the dressing room as Jarella kicks off. Gets up into the wind and comes down to Dennis Pearson at the 5. Over the 10, the 15, the 20, galloping at the 25. And he takes a nosedive. T. Bell might have had the initial contact on him. Let's see where they're going to mark the football. He went down like a rocket. They're going to give him the 32-yard line. The Atlanta offense. Billy Rickman and Wallace Francis, the wide receivers. Mike Ken, Dave Scott, Jeff Van Note, R.C. Thielman, and Warren Bryant. The interior line, Jim Mitchell, the tight end. Steve Bartkowski, the quarterback. They run out of the eye formation, the pro eye. Bubba Bean, the inside man. And the give is to the top of the eye, and straight ahead drives Haskell Standback over the 35 and up to the 37-yard line, where Lauren Taves brings him down. Elsie Greenwood, Joe Green, John Banizak, and Dwight White in the front four. The linebackers. Jack Ham returning to action after losing two games with an injury. Jack Lambert and Lauren Taves. Ron Johnson and Mel Blunt on the corners. Mike Wagner and Donnie Schell are the safeties. Seven-yard gain, second down three for Atlanta. Hand off, taken by the inside back, Bubba Bean, working his way over the left side of the line, fighting up to the 40-yard line, and he may have a first down. Again, Lauren Taves gets the stop for the Steelers. First down, Atlanta. It's kind of curious, Steve Furness is healthy again, ready to play, but Steve Furness is not in that front four. John Banizak still playing the tackle position, even though he's the 
size more likely of a defensive end, but the coaches seem to have been happy with his play there. But Furness on the bench. Hmm. Billy Rickman and Dennis Pearson are running in plays from the wide receiver post. They've got their wide outs to the right. Man in the slot, out of the eye formation. Bartkowski hands it off. And straight ahead, Haskell stand back, meets nothing but solid steal. Dwight White there to meet him. Knock him down at the 40-yard line. So no gain that time as they tried to hit into the interior of the defensive line. A slight loss, about a half yard on the play. The ball is midway between the sideline stripes, just inside the Atlanta 40. The Falcons trail three to nothing. The Steelers held that ball nine minutes and 58 seconds, ran 18 plays, covered 85 yards, and settled for three. Bartkowski hands it off. And on a cross box, here comes Sandback, driving to the left side over the 45 and up to the 49-yard line. Mel Blunt meets him there. Haskell Sandback is six feet tall, 210, five-year veteran from Tennessee. And that's that time... He found the opening and angled left and brought the ball to the 49-yard line. Third down one. Joe Green had excellent penetration that time, and I don't believe he was being trapped. His penetration was too good. He went right by Stanback, who reeled off the good game. Stanback is their leading rusher, 225 yards coming into the ball game. They got a pair of tight ends, wing back set left. Stanback and Bean are the running backs. And the gives to Stanback. Cracks off the right side. Finds running room almost to the 45-yard line. He has a first down and some to spare. Mike Wagner, the Steelers, strong safety. Down at the bottom of the play. And he is aided by Lauren Tave. Marked the ball at the Pittsburgh 45. Second first down for the Atlanta Falcons. And now they move with the football. And they're driving it down the Steelers' throat. Not throwing the ball, just running the ball. The wide outs are set to the right, and they split. A man out to the left side. That is Jim Mitchell. And here he is going to Mitchell, and a quick turn, clearly out, taking the ball at the Pittsburgh 38 and stumbling out of bounds, covered by Mel Blunt. Jim Mitchell, the 10-year veteran tight end, playing a wide position, catches his eighth pass of the season. Advancing the ball to the Pittsburgh 38-yard line, a gain of eight yards. And, of course, Steve Bartkowski has been a mystery. The first man chosen in the 1975 draft, he was rookie of the year, but since then, nothing. He started this season on the bench. Last week, he put together a good ball game in hopes that uh, that's the beginning, that he's on track. Now. Mitchell was hurt. He's left the ball game under his own power. James Wright has replaced him at tight end. Bartkowski sets the Atlanta Falcons, hands the ball off to Bubba Bean, runs to the right, makes his cut, goes down over the 35 and onto the 34-yard line. Picks up enough yardage for a first down before he's stopped by Jack Cam. A penalty marker has gone down against the Atlanta Falcons. So a holding call is pending against the visitors from Georgia. And this has been one of their trademarks. The key mistakes that they make with a comparatively young team and this is one that is going to at least slow this drive down. It is marked off all the way back to the Pittsburgh 48-yard line. A 10-yard mark off Atlanta was holding. The center, Jeff Van Note, is the man called for holding. And when you see that flag go in the middle of the traffic there, you can pretty well assume that somebody was holding. They come out of the huddle sending Billy Rickman out left. Wallace Francis is in the slot to the left side. Running back, stand back and beam. Barkowski on a long count. Gives the ball to Bean, and Bean fights and spins and jams his way to the Pittsburgh 45-yard line. Coming off the right side of the Atlanta forward wall, Jack Lambert and Jack Cam work with Joe Green to stop the runner at the Pittsburgh 44-and-a-half-yard line. It is third down and nine yards to go. And Pittsburgh getting set send Dennis Winston in. He does not come in. Tony Dungy comes in. Winston came out and came back. And Lauren Caves is out. Four down linemen, two linebackers, and five defensive backs. Mitchell is back in there. He's okay. Francis to the left. Pearson to the right. Mitchell, the tight end. Barkowski, the quarterback. Third and nine. 
Barkowski on a straight drop back. Swing pass over to the right side. Bubba Bean. And they were looking for a screen. They didn't find it. Instead, John Banaszak came up to nail him at the Pittsburgh 47-yard line. They wanted a screen to the right side that time. The screen did not form. And Banaszak, the veteran from Eastern Michigan, made the play at the 47 and stopped the drive. Well, the Steelers came with a four-man rush, perhaps not the three-man rush that had been expected. And they had that play pretty well figured out. Two men to the outside to take down the ball carrier. John James is the punter, standing in his own 40-yard line. Gets away, a high spiraling kick. Here's Randy Rudershan watching it. Bounce around inside the 10. Atlanta people around it, and it's rolling down inside the 5 to the 2.5-yard line. The Atlanta players could have allowed it to get even closer to the goal, but they downed it at the 2.5. With Pittsburgh leading 3 to nothing. we have a timeout on the field, and we'll be right back. <laughs> one thing most people want to get from their new car, and that's their money's worth. When you go to your Chrysler Plymouth dealer and buy a Volari, that's just what you get, especially now that it's end of year time. You get your money's worth, you get your money's worth, you get your money's worth, and now, at your Chrysler Plymouth dealer, come get your money's worth right now. The selection of Volari Plant 6 Coupes, sedans, and the number one selling wagon in America over the past two years is still good. And they come with such good year-end values, you'll be glad you waited. So see your Chrysler Plymouth dealer today. Drive home in your new Volari and find out how good it feels to drive your money's worth of value with Volari. You get your money's worth, you get your money's worth, you get your money's worth, and now, at your Chrysler Plymouth dealer, come get your money's worth. See your Steelerland Chrysler Plymouth dealer for a super year-end deal. When a few moments ago, the Atlanta Falcons downed that football, that punt on the Steelers' two-and-a-half-yard line. It was only the fourth time this season that the Steelers have failed to return a punt. They went into this game. It's amazing, having returned 27 out of 30 punts. That's flat fantastic. But this was a nice high kick that was just as well not fielded. So the Steelers will begin deep in the hole and try to put another one of those long drives together. They've been their trademarks this year. Long drive. Steelers just inside their own three-yard line. They move left to right, leading three to nothing. Here's the handoff to Blyer coming to the right and then putting his head down and carrying it up to the five-yard line. Good stiff resistance from Jeff Gates. A 6'3", 250-pound defensive end, Robert Pennywell, the middle linebacker, comes out of the play, and a penalty marker has gone down. So the official stands over the ball at the five-yard line. Atlanta is getting the option, being explained by the referee, so the penalty is pending against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Atlanta can take the down, giving Pittsburgh second down and about eight yards to go, or it could take the penalty. It's a holding call against Pittsburgh, and it will be declined by the Atlanta Falcons. So they take the two-yard gain, second down eight, Pittsburgh at its own five-yard line. As you look back on that Steelers scoring drive at the start of this period, uh, you see that the Steelers have really wanted to reorganize their running game today, but let's see what they do here. John Stallworth wide left, Lynn Swan split to the right, the near side. Bradshaw backs up a little, throws out to Stallworth near the nine-yard line, and he backs out of bounds with the ball at the sideline. So it was designed for the short gainer, and nobody actually touched Stallworth. Rick Bias came over to cover, marked the ball at the nine-yard line, and it's going to be third down and three. Terry Bradshaw now four for six. One of his two misses, he had T-Bell wide open in the end zone and overthrew him by a good margin, and that's rare for Terry Bradshaw, but he's now four for six. Here they come out of the huddle. The Pittsburgh Steelers in the black jerseys, the gold pads, the Atlanta Falcons in white and crimson, white jerseys. Bradshaw dropping back to the goal line, now firing up the middle. Juggles by Randy Grossman at the 22-yard line, covered by Tommy Prybor, incomplete. And that's the end of the first quarter. The score, Pittsburgh 3, Atlanta nothing. Foodland scores big this week, Steeler fans, with eight big pages of coupons and bargains in your local paper, like this mighty meaty meat special. Country Pride Grade A Chicken Fryers in the budget pack, only 49 cents a pound. Well, Randy.
Randy Grossman should have had it. The pass was right there. It was long enough for the first down, but Randy dropped it. We'll be back after this pause on the Steelers Football Network. This is WVAM-FM El Tuna, Country FM 100. Now back to Steeler Football 78. Pittsburgh now will go into punt formation. Billy Rickman is deep for Atlanta. Greg Cope was standing about five yards deep in his end zone. The punt will carry right to left. Wind is hard to figure in here. Here's the snap. And he gets it off up into the wind. And here is Rickman at the 47. Running to his left inside the 45. Cuts down over the 40 to the 35. Now going to the outside. The 30. Cuts goes to the 25. And is brought down by Mel Blunt around the 23-yard line. Mel Blunt got the hit. Aided and abetted by Larry Anderson. A 37-yard punt. And the return all the way back to the Pittsburgh 24-yard line. Well, first one man missed him, then uh, Fred Anderson of the Steelers missed him. The big rookie, Colquitt Gamely, made a try. He didn't succeed, so the kick return is clear to the 24. Crowd beginning to chant defense. Atlanta at the Pittsburgh 24. Wide outs both ways, operating out of the eye formation. They give the stand back, and he hesitates, then cuts off the left side, coming inside the 20 and down near the 17-yard line. Haskell stand back, the ball carrier. Lauren Caves and Joe Green make the tackle. They mark the ball at the 17. From the 24, it's a gain of seven yards. Second down, three. Seven yards, second down, three. Stand back, a five-year veteran from Tennessee. Out of the huddle, they send Dennis Pearson wide left. They bring Wallace Francis to the right as a flanker. The tight end is Jim Mitchell. Here's the give to Bubba Bean. And he's brought down by Lauren Tays as he crosses the 15-yard line, goes down at the 14. He angled off left tackle that time, made a slight cut, and Tays was there and waiting. But it is very near to a first down. The ball is at the Pittsburgh 14-yard line. Taves having to fight off a strong block from Haskell Standback, the running back, in order to make the tackle. He did make it, but too late to stop the first down attempt. They do have a first down at the 14-yard line of the Steelers. The Steelers leading 3-0. Steelers have still not given up a point in the first quarter of any game this season. So they got out of that period without Atlanta scoring. Steelers had the ball the first 9 minutes, 58 seconds of the period. Here's Atlanta threatening first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Little stunning by Mike Wagner. And to give the stand back, and he bumps into one of his own men, spins into the middle of the line, and goes down to the 11-yard line. Haskell stand back tackled by Jack Tam. Let's see where they uncover the football. It's at the 11-yard line. A gain of three yards, second down, and seven yards to go. As Dennis Pearson comes back out on the field, bringing the play from Lehman Bennett's staff on the far side. Pearson, a rookie from San Diego State. 5'11", 177, he's a flyer from a school that has a tradition of sending out flyers. Strong right formation, wide outs, both directions. Steve Bartkowski is the quarterback, and Bartkowski gives it up the middle to Bubba Bean, and he makes it over the 10 to the 8-yard line. John Banizak, the four-year veteran from Eastern Michigan, teaming up with Jack Lambert, the middle linebacker, to stop the runner. They mark it at the 9-yard line. Atlanta looks at third down and... Five. Good play by Banizak, knifing across from his left. But the Steelers came into this game with the best defense against the rush in the American Conference. But Atlanta is thinking they can run on them, and they have been. Banizak out, and Dennis Winston in as an extra linebacker. Atlanta wide in both directions. Barkowski on a passing down, drops back. Barkowski, his nails brought down at the 17-yard line. Jack Ham, Warren Cage, in there. To knock him off balance and knock him down. And that moves the ball back to the 17-yard line. That is the first sack against the Atlanta Falcons. Fred Steinford, who's been having some trouble with his field goal kicking, who was up at Penn State to get some help, has hit three of eight. Now he's going to be kicking from the 24-yard line, a 34-yard attempt. And this range is one for three. John James is the holder on a 34-yard attempt. The ball is down. The sidewinder kicks it. It is off to the side. No good. He hooks it. A 
34-yard attempt right down the middle is no good. Pittsburgh maintains a 3 nothing lead, and we'll be right back. Pat's Extra Light comes with only 70 calories. And that's good news because that's half the calories of our regular beer. Yet Pat's Extra Light still has all that good beer taste because it's naturally brewed. Isn't that the kind of light beer you've been looking for? Pat's Extra Light. Pat's Extra Light. Got the calories, all the taste, naturally. So next time you're shopping for a light beer, remember, most light beers still contain 90 to 100 calories. But Pabst Extra Light has only 70, so it's far less filling. Pabst Extra Light, the light beer that delivers. Half the calories, all the taste, naturally. Calories all the taste, naturally. Well, Tom Leslie, our producer, points out that in the warm-up, Steinfort missed six field goal attempts in a row, but he, point, he also points out that they were of the long variety. Anyhow, he went up to practice at Penn State this week under the eye of soccer coach Walter Barr, whose son Chris kicks for the Cincy Bengals and whose son Matt has done a whale of a job for Penn State. And Barr said that he immediately saw what he was doing wrong, but he said when you change a kicker in one respect, you're apt to cause a thousand new problems. And I said I hope that Steinfort coming into this Steeler game heard Walter Barr say that because then he would really be fouled up. You know that the Falcons were desperate when they sent him up there to Penn State. It appears that he has not yet snapped out of it, and he may be gone uh, by tomorrow unless he suddenly improves. First down and 10 yards to go. The Steelers at their own 20-yard line. Bradshaw, play action fake, back there, going downfield for Swan, there he is at the 47, over the 50, to the Atlanta 45, right down at the 43 yard line. Lynn Swan on Roland Lawrence, and he beat him. Swan came straight down and then headed in, and was out in the open, took it on the run. The ball advanced from the 20 yard line, 13. Seven yards to the Atlanta 43 yard line. You betcha Terry Bradshaw had great protection as he caught Atlanta sleeping on first down. Beautiful pass, the Steelers driving. Lynn Swan, the receiver, his first catch of the afternoon. Bradshaw making the flyer back there again, stepping out of the pocket, drilling it down intended for Randy Grossman. Broken up by Greg Brazina. Flipped into the air, and they had an interception shot, but to no avail. I have Bradshaw with nine passes tried and five completed. That was a good defensive job. Yes, it was. Uh, Bradshaw knew he had to drill that football and drill it. He did, but Brazina outfought Grossman for position, and uh, perhaps had the ball not been thrown so hard, he would have hung on to it and intercepted it. That was Swan's longest pass reception of the season, 37 yards. Wowie. On our Steeler Network today, WOIL, Oil City, Pennsylvania, WPME, Punxsutawney, and WBSC, Somerset, among others, we welcome you to Steeler football from Three Rivers, where the clouds have obliterated the sun for the moment. A double wing, single setback, right behind Bradshaw is Harris to give to Harris. Looking for the blocking, goes to the outside of the right at the 40, to the sideline, heads for the marker, and they mark him out of bounds at the Atlanta 35-yard line. Roland Lawrence, the cornerback, six-year veteran from Tabor College, made the play on him, and he'll be about a yard and a half short of a first down. Oh, and Rocky Blyer did a nice job of blocking as he delayed that Atlanta pursuit, and Franco swept outside around him to make the yardage. Third down and one. J.D. points out they were in a 3-4 on that long yardage play, and he beat the linebacker to the outside. We have Steve Corson and T. Bell in, two tight ends. Mullins to the right, Grossman to the left. The wing back is T. Bell. Short yardage formation. Bradshaw giving it to Harris. Harris hesitated and drove off the right side and picked up the first down. He is almost to the 32-yard line. First down number nine for the Steelers to lead 3-0 over the Atlanta Falcons. As Sam Davis mowed down Roland Lawrence, the cornerback, uh, to make that first down possible. Sam Davis said to me the other night, nobody ever mentions our box. And I said, I mention them all the time, Sam. He said, that's good. I says, I also mention it when you miss them. He said, that's bad. 
Robert Pennywell got the tackle. So Blyer steps into that slot close on the left side. Franco headed straight down, cut to his left, goes over the 30 and goes down at the 28-yard line. Greg Brezina got the tackle on him. Boy, you can see him feeling for those holes today. And that time he headed straight in, made his cut slightly to the left, found a little running room and brought the ball to the 32-and-a-half-yard line. Second down and five yards to go. That plays a winner. This is another pretty lengthy possession, is it not? Even though the 37 yards were eaten up on that one play, but they're controlling the clock a lot. Pittsburgh moving right to left in Atlanta territory at the 32-and-a-half yard line. Now they pull a backer right up in the middle, giving the ball to Franco. Runs to the right, hesitates, cuts back to the left, and cracks down inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. Robert Pennywell and Greg Brezina. Make the play for the Atlanta Falcons. Mark the ball at the Atlanta 24. It's going to be third down, a yard and a half to go, and here come Corson and T-Bell again. And Franco is in with 54 yards already. We've got nine minutes and 30 seconds remaining yet in the second period. The Steelers leading three to nothing and driving. The wide receivers are out. T. Bell is going to line up as a tight end to the left, and Randy Grossman takes the wing to the right. Here's Bradshaw giving it to Blyer. Breyer trying to get off the right side. He does. He skips and hops and goes off right tackle down to the 20-yard line. Fulton Teichendahl finally brought the rock down. Robert Blyer from Notre Dame carrying the ball for the Steelers to the 21-yard line where they mark him down. Picks up the 10th first down. First and 10, Pittsburgh leading 3 to nothing at the Atlanta 21-yard line. The Steelers have young Steve Corson working in that offensive line, and on that play, he was a boomer. Boomer. A boomer. Sound That's like, the guy he hit. Sound like you're from Oklahoma. Oh. The double wing again. Stalwarts to the left and Blyer in the slot to the right and the give to Franco over the right side. Cuts back at the 15, down to the 10 and over the 9. Made his move inside right tackle. Got across the line of scrimmage. Cut back to the left. Went to the 15. Down inside the 10 to the 8 and a half yard line where Brazina and Pridemore bring him down. First down goal to go for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Their 11th first down. They started back at their 20-yard line. They've been a long drive team. 15 out of their 16 touchdown drives this year going at least 50 yards. This is a very important drive, and the touchdown is needed right here against a tough defensive team. And the give is to Blyer. Blyer over the right side. He's ready for pay dirt. He's into the end goal for a touchdown. Blyer came over the right side. Then went out to the right and got out beyond the secondary. Roland Large could not stop him, and he went into the end zone unmolested for a Pittsburgh touchdown, and the Steelers lead it 9 to nothing. Rocky Blyer found a hole as big as a basketball court. He rambled inside the left linebacker, Kuykendall, and then beat the cornerback, Lawrence, into the corner. It was no sweat for the Rock. Jarella kicking. Colquitt holding. At the 10-yard line. Ball is down. It is up there. And it is good. Pittsburgh takes a 10 0 lead, and Steelers football continues after this timeout. Six minutes remaining in the second quarter to the Steelers lead the Atlanta Falcons 10 0. Rocky Blyer gets his second touchdown of the season. Jarella kicks off right to left, angling to the sideline. And here they come out of the 10, the 15, up to the 20, the 25, the 30. That's George Franklin with the ball, and he's cracked down at the 32-and-a-half-yard line. Franklin brought down by Tony Dungy of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He hooked that one toward the near sideline, and Franklin took it at about the 9 and found some running room back to the 32-and-a-half-yard line. First down, 10, Atlanta. Chuck Noll on his show before the game raving about how well the special teams have done, but today they have done nothing. Out of the eye formation. Wideouts both ways for Atlanta from the 32 and a half yard line. Here's Bartkowski giving the ball to Sandback over the right side to the 38 yard line. John Banizak took his pins out from under him and was aided and abetted by Jack Lambert. The sledgehammer. Offside Pittsburgh. And Atlanta probably will take that one. Put the ball in about the same position and give the Falcons a first down. They started just inside the 33-yard line, so they come back to the previous spot. And they're playing button, button, who's got the football? Got two balls out there now. 
All right, five yards marked off. Takes the ball to the 37 and a half yard line. First down five. Can my figures be right as Barkowski only thrown twice in this football game? You're right, Byron. Boy, well, the Jets last week were the first team to rush over 100 yards against the Steelers, and maybe the Falcons looking at the films thought they saw something. Slot right formation. They put Wallace Francis in the slot. Dan Notes snaps the ball. Barkowski hands it off. And look at this. Coming off the right side. Bubba B. Slanting up to the 43-yard line. And Jack Lambert gets the tackle. Aided by Donnie Shell. Donnie Shell in his fifth year from South Carolina State. 5'11", 190. Lambert, five-year veteran from Kent State. 6'4", 220. The Atlanta Falcons pick up a first down at the 43-and-a-half-yard line. That will be the Falcons' fourth first down of the afternoon. Billy Rickman, wide left. Wallace Francis, flanks right. Bartkowski, dropping back, has time. Looking, looking, now he's chased out of the pocket. They got him, they don't have him. He's running to the 40, the 45, to the far side of the field. He goes down at the 50-yard line, right in front of Mel Blunt. Bartkowski does not like to do that, but he had to. Mel Blunt covered him as he went down at the 50-yard line, did not want to take the hit because he has had trouble, leg trouble. And Barkowski does not like to scramble. And that time, he simply had to, and the big guy did it. He picked up seven yards. He scrambled, uh, started scrambling last week somewhat, and his teammates were very much surprised, and they said, that's great. He's got to do it when he has the opportunity. They said, we're glad to see him at last scrambling, and that is what he just did. That great adversity in Atlanta finally turned to religion to try to find some faith in the fans and faith in what he was doing himself. He's getting results. Running out of the eye formation. Giving the ball to Bubba Bean. Is it Stanback? It is Stanback. Diving to the 48-yard line. Stanback is 210. Bean is 195. They're 15 pounds apart in weight, but they resemble each other. Lambert and Ham made the stop. Haskell Stanback carried the football. It's going to be third and two. Now let's see how Atlanta... Will align using two tight ends, Mitchell and Wright. Wing back, Francis to the right side. Short yardage on third down. Bartkowski giving the ball to Bean. Wheels over the left side, and he almost has it. They'll have to measure, I think. Thrown back by Jack Lambert. He ran into the pillar of the Steeler linebacking core, and Lambert was there to meet him at the 47-yard line. It will require a measurement, I believe. The officials are looking it over very carefully, and they call for the sticks from the near side of the field. Pittsburgh is leading in the ball game 10 to nothing. A Jarella field goal in the first quarter capped off a long drive. The Steelers maintained the ball 9 minutes and 58 seconds after the opening kickoff. Then they choked off Atlanta with a field goal try that was unsuccessful and marched 80 yards for a touchdown. Blyer going over the right side, 8 yards out. A reminder for those of you listening to WTA in Pittsburgh, be sure to stay tuned after the game for Steelers Hotline. This year, after every home game, we'll open up the lines and you can call in and talk Steelers. Myron and I will be in the Steeler offices with Bob Co- Coppler at the studios. Join us for the all-new Steeler Hotline right after the game. Don't forget that, Myron. We need your help. I'll remember to be there, Jack. The Falcons have a first down by the they nose sure of the football. First down, 10 at the 46-yard line. Atlanta with three wideouts. Slot right. He's a fumble by Barkowski. They die for the football. Pittsburgh ball. Barkowski fumbled the snap, and Joe Green came up with the football, and John Batterzak wraps him on the helmet. Pittsburgh recovers the Barkowski fumble at the Steeler 48-yard line. So that is the first turnover in the ball game by either club. And Joe Green was simply in the right place at the right time. Plopped himself right down on the football. The Steelers take it over, leading 10-0. Steelers football continues after this timeout. Attention all sports. J.D. Fogarty pointed out in talking with one of the Atlanta coaches, he said that the reason they blitz so much is the front four is not a great pass rush unit. It is great against the run. And thus far today, it has not been able to stop the run. One of those things hard to figure. Here is Bradshaw back there. Oh, he has time, and he goes to the far side. Coming back, Swan at the 40, and he drives back to the 40 and is piled under. He may have the first down. Swan had to come back 
to the 40 to take it. And his momentum brought him back to about the 42-yard line. Roland Lawrence and others tied into him. And they're going to mark the ball at the 40-and-a-half-yard line. First down, Pittsburgh. Yes, he tried to hoop around Frank Reed, who was defending on the pass and almost lost the first time, but fought his way back up to the, well, down to the Atlanta 40-and-a-half-yard line to get the first down by a hair. Swan has 29 catches on the year, 384 yards. His second catch of the day. Bradshaw sets them at the Atlanta 40-yard line. Terry Bradshaw, play action, fake to Blyer. He goes to pass, ball flies out of his hand, and what will the ruling be? They're giving it to Atlanta. Jim Bailey recovers it. Bradshaw's arm went back, and the ball slipped out of his hand. And it is ruled a fumble. He did not come forward with it. It dropped off his hand, so Atlanta recovers at the Pittsburgh 49. Yes, Terry had good protection around him, and he cocked that arm, and as he tried to bring it forward at the top of the delivery, the ball flipped back off his hand. It was a close one, I'll tell you that. The crowd is going, and they're not booing Bradshaw. They're booing the officials, booing the officials. And I think that was a good, strong call because he brought his arm back, and the ball just slipped off. It slipped off just as he started to bring it forward. It's just so close. Looking at the picture shows that he brought his arm back and as he started to bring it forward, as you said, it dropped off. So he he didn't pass it. No, I wouldn't think so. I don't want to... He was it's like the Statue of Liberty dropping her torch. <laughs> well, anyhow, who put what on the football? Because nobody touched him and why did it disappear from the palm of his hand? Get your glasses and look for Oakland out. I was just going to say if this were the Oakland Raiders, you'd have to be suspicious. But in any event, uh, the Steelers, after getting the football on a turnover when Barkowski fumbled and Joe Green recovered, uh, now turn the ball back to the Falcons on a quarterback turnover or quarterback fumble. 4.06 remaining in the second period. Steelers leading 10 nothing. Busiest man on the sideline right now is Tony Parisi, spraying a new layer of stick up on Terry's hand right now. <laughs> that really was a weird play. And uh, you wouldn't figure the ball would be sweaty on a cool day in the 40s, uh, the low 40s, but nevertheless, there it was. It's really something, the way the, the Falcons have persisted in running against the Steelers. And I wonder if the Steelers are just as happy with that Atlanta game plan as the Falcons are. The crowd is unhappy with the Atlanta Falcons or with the officials. It was a good call. Bradshaw a little embarrassed. He has a right to a mistake. Here's a handoff to Beam trying to get to the outside. And boy, they had him nailed. Lord Taves played him beautifully, then got help from Jack Lambert. As he ran to the left and turned the corner, he'll get about two yards. Isn't it fun after the game when you go down to talk to Bradshaw and say, what about that play where you lost the football? And listen to his explanation. He, he's something. He'd say, golly. Golly. I don't know. Shoot, I don't know what happened on that play. You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and eight. Atlanta has everybody wide that it can get wide. Mitchell, the tight end, is wide to the left. Slot right. Markowski nailed by L.C. Greenwood back at the 40-yard line. Wowee, the man from Arkansas, A.M. and S. by Green's Lightning, the 10-year veteran, firing through the sack. Markowski, the second sack of the afternoon for the Steelers, and that is the loss all the way back from the Pittsburgh 47 to the Atlanta 40, a 13-yard loss on the sack. Denny Winston comes in, replacing John Banizak. We go with four linebackers. 33 defense, and they're looking for the pass. Third down and 22 yards to go. Atlanta with a maximum protection set in the backfield, and instead they hand the ball off to Bean, flagged out. He stumbles, goes down at the line of scrimmage. Bubba Bean trying to get off the left side nail. The penalty marker has gone down. And it's against Atlanta, according to Jack Cam. Steelers will decline it. And Atlanta will give up the football. Donnie Shell having words with one of the officials. Atlanta call for illegal procedure. John James. 
standing at his own 25-yard line, putting left to right. Randy Rudershan downfield for the Steelers. The snap to James. Rush on him, and he gets it away. Rudershan takes it at his own 28 with people on him. Oh, he barely breaks the tackle. Went him to the right for the 30. Coming up field over the 35, and he fights his way to the 38-yard line. Hey, what a play by Randy Rudershan as he took that one with the Falcons charging down on him. They hit him. He spun away. He continued to the far side and advanced the football almost to the 40-yard line. Dewey McLean brought down Randy Rudershan. They mark it at the 39. And the kid from New Jersey was running full tilt. The Marwa Madman is coming into his own 216-yard re returns last week against the Jets. And that time, he took a hard hit by, I believe, Mike Esposito, a special teams man. And you thought that one's going to put him down for sure, but it didn't. He kept fighting. He brought it out to the 39-yard line. 32-yard punt at a fine return by Randy Rudershan. So the Steelers gave up the football momentarily but didn't lose too much, and they're ready to go again. Late scores in the second quarter. The Jets leading Buffalo 21-7. In the first quarter, Detroit with a surprising 6-0 lead over Washington on two field goals. Nothing up on the other ball games, including Cleveland at New Orleans, Tampa Bay at Kansas City, New York at Dallas, all of those in the central time zone. Let's pause now for station identification. Get rust-proofing back... This is WVAM-FM Altoona, Country FM 100, your station for Steeler football in 1978. Well, I believe Randy Rudershan's uh, return was good for 11 yards, but it was really sensational. It was not in terms of yardage, but in just getting a return, because they were right down his throat when he caught the ball. I thought maybe they were going to take his head off his shoulder pads, and boy, he is tough. He of the blonde locks. Can he run with that football? Give to Franco. Off the left side. Cuts back. And he goes to the 45-yard line. Franco Harris. Jim Bailey makes the tackle. Harris running with that typical Franco Harris action today where he just simply heads in one direction, watches for that hole. He seems to sense it. He finds it. He's good for the five, six, six yards this time. He's got a mere 70 yards thus far in the ball game. Oh, man. It is second down and four for the Steelers at their own 45-yard line. They lead 10 to nothing. Here's the give to Blyer. And Blyer trying to move to the right is Fields along the line of scrimmage. Nowhere to go for the Rock this time. Jeff Merrow and Greg Brezina make the stop. Merrow is a four-year veteran from West Virginia, and they liken him with his blonde locks to some well-known wrestler down in the Southland where they go big for stock cars and wrestling, and they call him not Gorgeous George, but something equally inappropriate. Well, we have a two-minute warning timeout. We'll be right back. Gotta meet the morning train. Now we've got a brand new reason for you to stop at golf. New Golf Pipe Multi-G. A motor oil so good you change it only once a year or after 15,000 miles, whichever comes first. This remarkable motor oil has been tested in nearly a million miles of actual driving. Show Gulf Pride Multi G protects your engine for 15,000 miles. And for most car owners, that's a year or more. Save yourself time, money, and inconvenience. Change to new Gulf Pride Multi G, the once a year oil change from Gulf. Fleming, you liken Jeff Merrow to gorgeous George, and you sit down there in West Virginia, they call him something equally inappropriate. Well, in Atlanta, they call him that. In Atlanta. In Atlanta. Virginia. Uh, and I, and I, I, I said to you during the commercial, what is, what is it they call him? You said, I don't know, I've forgotten. What kind of a story is that? I think they call him the blonde bombshell. That's the same thing they call me in Bethel Park. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, really? <laughs> I thought that was Tom Scladini. <laughs> Here we go now, third down, short yardage. And to give us to Harris, swings left, cuts back, up over the 50, goes to the Atlanta 47 and a half yard line for a first down. Robert Pennywell and Tommy Pridemore there to meet him, mark it at the 47 yard line. The Steelers have picked up their 14th first down. Again, we see Harris making that move to the left and then cutting back through the hole. 
And it is first down, 10 at the 47. Gates, Bailey, Lewis, Merrill up front. Heikendall, Pennywell, Brazina, the linebackers. Lawrence and Bias, the cornerbacks. Reed and Pridemore are the safeties. Bradshaw sets the Steelers. Bradshaw drops back. He wants to throw. Drills it down the middle. Taken by Randy Grossman at the 35. And he wheels on down to the 30-yard line. Fulton, Heikendall, and Tommy Pridemore bring him down. Mark it at the 31 as Grossman took that ball near the 35 and then wheeled off to his right and goes to a first down at the 31. A 16-yard gain, and I'll tell you, the Falcons were blitzing, but the Steelers picked up that blitz beautifully. They have not allowed Bradshaw to be sacked thus far, and you know, he came in this game with a bum knee, so they are playing it tough on the pass protection. A reminder for those of you listening to WTAE in Pittsburgh. Be sure to stay with us after the game for Steelers Hotline. This year, after every home game, we'll open the phone lines for you to call in and talk Steelers. Jack Fleming and I will be in the Steelers offices with Bob Kopp. We're back at the studios. Join us for our all-new Steelers Hotline right after this game. The only restriction, none of Myron's relatives are allowed to call in. You can't load the phone line. Well, my relatives are of uh, such brilliance that you would not be able to provide them with the answers to their questions, so that's just as well. <laughs> the meantime, how do you like that pass protection Terry Bradshaw is getting? It's absolutely phenomenal. He can just pick his spots, and as you said, he is, he's throwing the ball. Now, that time he had to drill it, and it was right there, and there was Grossman. And you know what? How soon they forget. In, in an announcer's mind, you get things set up, and... I've said so much this season about Randy Rudershan that I hesitate every time Grossman's name comes up. I start to say Rudershan. A mental thing, you know, Myron. Uh huh. You can understand that. Not really, but I'll take your word for Believe it. Believe me, it's there. Okay. You got to get reacclimated to Grossman <laughs> because he hasn't played that much. Yeah, that was that's only true. his third catch of the season. Here's the handoff, and there's a cross buck up the middle. Harris inside the 30, down to the 27-yard line. Penalty marker down. Pennywell and Pridemore brought him down, and Pridemore may have gotten a late hit. Let's see what they're going to do from the 26 and a half yard line. Should be half the distance to the goal. They're taking it down to the 12 and a half. Now let's see what the call is. I can't hear him. Can you? I'll see if I can find out. foul, Lou. I know that, but I'm trying to find out who it's for. Lou's going personal foul. You're right. Bradshaw back again to get the rush on him. He gets rid of it. Flag goes down. They came after Bradshaw. The pass is incomplete. But the charge, personal foul against Frank Reed. They had a blitz on. Reed was blitzing. Bradshaw went to the end zone to Stallworth, who was pretty well covered. I it was not watching Stallworth that much because Bradshaw got worked over and the flag went down and it will be half the distance to the goal again. No question about it, Frank Reed had a lot of time to pull up. He did not play him Bradshaw to the ground, probably because the ref was yelling, don't you dare touch him, as he touched him. And probably he held up at that point, but it was a good call without any question. A case of protecting the quarterback from an unnecessary hit. 106 remaining in the first half. The Steelers at the six-yard line. Franco unofficially with 85 yards in the first half. Can he get 100. Give it Pennywell. to him for six, so that'll give him 91. Pennywell and Bias had Stallworth covered. Those have been two big mistakes for Atlanta. Pittsburgh is at the six-yard line. Here's Brad Shaw. Delay rolling out to the left. Got a man coming after him, and he goes to the end zone for the touchdown. Brad Shaw rolled out to the left. Tommy Tribor was coming across. The only person who had read the play, and Tribor could not keep him out of the end zone. He forced him out of bounds, but he crossed inside the pylon for the touchdown. So Bradshaw fake the Atlanta defense that time. Inside fake, back as though to pass, rolling left and into the end zone and carried it in over Pryboar. Old peg leg, just a play for peg leg, huh? <laughs> Jarella will go for the point after. Steelers leading 16 to nothing. Ball is down. Roy kicks it. It is good. 17 to nothing lead. 
for the Pittsburgh Steelers as they go 61 yards on six plays and Bradshaw wheels out to the left and carries it six yards for the TD. You betcha, fake in the wall out. That was it. It was not at all a missed handoff. That was the play, the way the play was planned. And he was hit at the three-yard line, but dragged the tackler in with him, got just inside, just into the end zone in the corner. So here are the Steelers now leading 17 to nothing with 59 seconds remaining in the second quarter. The Falcons have been running the ball against them, but I have to feel that the Steelers perhaps uh, don't object to that. The Falcons possibly playing to hold the score down with that running strategy. It has not paid off in a single point. They had a shot, but Fred Steinfort blew a field goal attempt. And so they trail, and they're being whitewashed 17 to nothing. All right, I suppose uh, we will not see um, anything of note in the remaining seconds, but Roy Jarella is teeing up the ball. Here's Jack Fleming. Jarella will kick it off. Dennis Pearson is down deep for Atlanta. Heavy clouds now, no sunshine, and Jarrell is kicking a squib tight down, bouncing back to the five-yard line. George Franklin over the 10, the 15, the 20, 25, the 30, and he goes down at the 34-yard line. So the tackle for the Steelers made by Tony Dungy and Dennis Winston, and we will mark the ball at the 34-yard line. First down, 10 Atlanta. And the clock stops on that return. It's 52 seconds to go in the first half. And Pittsburgh leading 17 to nothing. New England leads Philadelphia 17 to nothing in the second period. The Jets over Buffalo 28 to 7 in the second period. Three wide out set for Atlanta, including... They had three wide receivers in there. Barkowski. Block. Barkowski. Pass blocked by Dwight White. Here's what we have. Barkowski standing in that pocket. And they were coming at him and coming at him. And he stayed in. He cocked his arm and threw. And Dwight White just batted it right back at him. Dwight White had looped around into the middle there and was up against about three blockers and was more or less biding his time to make a rush to find an opening. And then he started to make it. And he had that big Dave Scott in front of him, 285 pounds. And he just reached up over him and knocked down the pass. Second down, 10. At the Atlanta, 33 and a half yard line, 47 seconds remaining in the second quarter. They're wide in both directions, Rickman, Pearson, and Francis, all set wide. Barkowski back again. Now flips it to the safety valve man, Bubba Bean, in the left flat up over the 35, the 40, and on to the 43 yard line. Jack Lambert made the stop. They had Bubba Bean just floating out there to the left in a swing situation, and he was looking downfield. He had nobody. So he gave it to Bubba Bean, and Bean brings it up almost to a first down at the 43-yard line. Not quite. And the Steve Barkowski is now three for four. Bean has caught two of those, and one of those, two he caught, was for minus yardage. Atlanta stops the clock, 37 seconds remaining. So the Pittsburgh Steelers lead the Falcons 17 to nothing. No time to look forward to another game. Tunnel vision coached by Chuck Knoll. One game at a time. But we've got to tell you, next Sunday afternoon, we are at the Lakefront Stadium in Cleveland. And that shapes up as what they would have called in the old days a Pier 6 crawl. Well, I was talking to J.T. Thomas the other day, Jack, and he scouted the Cleveland-Houston game last week when the controversial call brought jugs, wine jugs, and whiskey bottles out of the stands and forced them to move the play to the other end of the field. And J.T. said it was something fierce. And I said, J.T., I'm afraid that when the Steelers go down there and those fans remembering that fumble that was not called here a few weeks ago, they may have to play the whole game at that end of the field. Well, move, it out, move it out in the lake. 37 seconds to go. Three wide receivers. Give the ball to Bean, and Bean cuts over the left side, and he moves it to the 50-yard line, and L.C. Greenwood brings him down from the rear. And it's a first down. Atlanta's sixth first down in the ball game. And the Falcons call timeout, stopping the clock with 32 seconds. They move the ball back near the 49-yard line. It's first down 10, Atlanta, outside of its own 49-yard line by inches. And the Pittsburgh Steelers send Jack Lambert off to the side to talk with George Perlis, the defensive coordinator, and other members of his staff. As a matter of fact, all the coaches are down there because they have vacated the booth to your left. 
The Falcons have one timeout remaining. L.C. Greenwood on that play, play, trying to strip the ball carrier of the football. I guess L.C.'s thinking, being that, well, he's got the first time. Let's see if we can get the football off him. I do believe that you'll often see attempted uh, stripping of the football on plays such as that, and why not? But it didn't work, so the Falcons still have it at their own 49-yard line, trying to get within field goal range. Right, the Steelers deploy defensively. Ron Johnson, Mel Blunt are on the corners. Tony Dungy is a fifth defensive back. Wagner and Shell are in there. Bartkowski at the controls of the Atlanta Falcons, and Bartkowski is back there. Yeah, he lets fly, and it, it's an intercepted. It came off the shoulder of Bubba Bean. There's a dive for it, and Pittsburgh has intercepted. Mel Blunt came over. Now, here's what happened. Bean coming out of the backfield. Bartkowski fired him a sharp pass that came off his shoulder, bounced into the air, and Mel Blunt made a diving interception at the Pittsburgh 42 and a half yard line. Off the shoulder of Bean, and Blunt, a diving interception. First down, 10 Pittsburgh. Yeah, Mel Blunt picked it off a few inches above the ground. Good interception, a diving play by Blunt as Taves took Bean out of the play after he had missed the pass. Blunt's first interception of the season. That's his 36th career interception, the second most in Steeler history. Bradshaw rolling right, seeing nowhere to go, and then going down on the turf. Wanted to do something out to the right, and saw he had nowhere to go, went down, and they jumped on him, which is their right to do, and he limped a little as he got up, but he'll be okay, and they're going to let the clock turn down. So time is running out in the first half of this ball game at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh. The undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers have built up a 17 to nothing lead. Bradshaw talking now with the officials momentarily. And the poss- I don't know what the possibility is. He's talking with Sam Davis, and they could be explaining the options for the second half at this particular moment. Now he's leaving the field. So we're at the end of the first half. The score is Pittsburgh 17, Atlanta nothing. Myron Cope will comment on the first half in a moment. If you think it's worth going an extra mile to get the best, we have a car you just might want to see. Halftime at Three Rivers Stadium. The Steelers leading the Atlanta Falcons 17 to nothing, looking once again powerful. When the Steelers, after the opening kickoff, throw from their own 12-yard line practically to the front door of the Falcons' goal line and then had to settle for a field goal, why, uh, that was a disturbing feeling that you may have experienced. I know I did, because when you see a team possess the football for almost 10 minutes, which certainly uh, is to the coach's uh, heart's delight, and then have to settle for three points, funny things begin to happen to that team. And uh, sure enough, the Steelers then, uh, when when the Falcons came back at them running it down their throat, the Steelers then uh, did appear uh, to be losing something. But they quickly got themselves together, and the Atlanta Falcons continued to stick with the ground game, not until their, uh, that is, up till their final series in the closing seconds of the first half, they had thrown the football only two times, and that was surprising, because Steve Bartkowski, in a victory over the New York Giants last week, was 14 for 26. He threw for 226 yards, and everybody was talking about how Bartkowski was showing signs of uh, living up to the big star that uh, he was expected to be when he was a first-round draft pick, indeed the first player chosen in the draft in 1975. But what do the Falcons and Coach Lee Bennett come out here uh, with in mind? Why, they come out with a relentless ground game that has netted them zero points. They've moved the ball okay up past midfield, but not down where it counts. The Steelers there come up with the big play, and uh, I would guess are totally content to let Atlanta uh, use up time if they prefer to continue doing that trailing 17 to nothing. But you have to figure that the Falcons in the second half will come out throwing because they cannot be using up time uh, so generously when they're trailing by 17 points. Bob Coppler is standing by with all the scores from around the league on the halftime scoreboard in just a minute. WVAM FM Altoona, Country FM 100, your exclusive Steeler football station. All right, the Steelers leading the Falcons 17 to nothing. Roy Jarella teeing up the football. And uh, 
quickly while we have a moment. Well, we have not a moment for more statistics. He's ready to kick, and here's Jack Fleming. Down deep, Atlanta has Tommy Brymore, Dennis Pearson, and George Franklin. Jarella, right to left from the 35, and this time high and long, and down to the 3, Franklin with the ball, out of it at 10, to the 15, the 20, and down at the 23-yard line. The return to the 23-yard line with Sidney Thornton covering the runner on the return. Atlanta has the ball first down 10. And certainly one stat I want to work in from the first half is Franco Harris in with 86 yards on 16 carries. That's an average of 5.4 a carry. Elsie Greenwood, Joe Green, John Banizak, Dwight White, and the Steeler front four. Backers pulled up very tight against the possibility of the Atlanta rush. They're going to start throwing, I think. Here's Bratkowski back there after him. And he gets rid of it, throws it out of the backfield to Bubba Bean. And Bean at the 28 is nailed and brought down by Jack Cam. So to get the uh, short gainer, as Myron and I talked at halftime, they can't stay with this running attack all afternoon because time's going to run out. They threw only five passes in the first half. That is their sixth. Their fourth completed, and Bean has caught three of those, one for negative yardage and two for relatively short yardage. Second down and five. They deploy Francis wide left, bring Dennis Pearson out to the right, the near side. Jeff Van Note is the center. Barkowski gives the ball to stand back, running to the left, has blockers, turns the corner, and the flag is down as he makes it up to the 33-yard line. Lauren Taves made the tackle. Flag down behind the runner, and we should have a holding call against the Atlanta Falcons. We do. That will cost the Falcons 10 yards. And we'll take the ball back to the Atlanta 20, back around the 19-yard line. Now, we were talking about defensive end Jeff Merrill from West Virginia for the Falcons. And I found out that he bears a great likeness to Dusty Rhodes, who is a well-known wrestler in the South. He's known as the Great American Dream. Hey, who, he, who? Dusty Rhodes is or Jeff Merrill? Huh? Jeff Merrow is the defensive end who looks like Dusty Rhodes. And Myron, you're obviously not up on your wrestling. So any of you fans who want to call in locally on our talk show after the game and discuss professional wrestling with Myron, be sure and ask for Myron. Ten-yard mark-off. Forty yards total on five penalties against Atlanta. Puts the ball at the 19-yard line. The word on Betty Cunningham is uh, damage to the ligaments of the left knee. He'll be placed in a cast immediately. Will be out indefinitely. Ouch. That is bad news. Ricky Patton is in their backfield replacing Stanback. The handoff goes to Bubba Bean, and he made a great move at the line of scrimmage. Shot over the right side, out over the 20, and up to the 25-yard line where Jack Ham and Mike Wagner brought him down. Atlanta now has third down and eight yards to go. And the Steelers wheel Tony Dungy out on the field, replacing Lawrence Caves. And we go with an extra defensive back. Wagner, Dungy, Shell. The corners are Johnson and Blunt. Blunt picks up the man to the right, and Johnson picks up the man to the left, almost head to head. Here is Markowski back. And again, he hits the man out of the backfield, Ricky Patton. And he's along the 25, and then nailed by Jack Ham. Ham has solved that problem twice. That was Ricky Patton, the rookie, the rookie from Jackson State. They got a flag down on the play. And they're going to get John Banizak or Tony Dungy for a late hit. Let's see where that's going to take the football. All the way up to the 45-yard line. 15-yard mark off for a personal foul. In the process, they have completed their fifth pass. And they pick up their seventh first down. It was John Banizak on the late hit. Slot left formation. Hand off, top of the eye. Haskell stand back. Up to the 48-yard line. Jack Lambert makes the tackle. Second down, about eight yards to go. Spot 
spotted at the 47. They have Dennis Pearson wide left. They put Wallace Francis in the slot. And they bring Bubba Bean up as the wing back to the right in a double wing formation. Here's Barkowski back to the day. He got him. Down he goes. L.C. Greenwood looped around him and hit him from the rear. He was cornered up front by Dwight White. And that is the third sack of the afternoon against Barkowski. And it puts the ball back near the 40-yard line. And the big fella, Bryant, playing opposite to L.C. Greenwood, Try to hold him by the shirt as L.C. went by him because he'd been out played, but L.C. wouldn't even have any of that, and he did move in on Bartkowski to get his second sack of the ball game. Jack Ham has one, L.C. has two. John Banizak comes off the field, and Dennis Winston in as the fourth linebacker. Look at the Steelers punch those people up front. Third down and long yardage. They're coming. And they got it. No, he skips away, and he gets rid of it downfield, and it's caught at the Pittsburgh 45-yard line by Billy Rickman, and he goes down at the 40. Nailed by Mike Wagner. Boy, they had a great rush that time on Bartkowski. L.C. and Joe Green were in pursuit of the quarterback, and he just barely broke away from one on an ankle tackle and got rid of that ball. And we had opened up the secondary pretty much. The play covered 19 yards to the 40. Yes, it was uh, Lambert who almost dropped him with the ankle ankle tackle. He just got the ball away by a hair, but that's what it's all about. When they have that big blitz coming, if you get it away, you're probably going to complete it because nobody's back there. Atlanta to Pittsburgh 40. Steelers leading 17 to nothing. Hand off goes to Bubba Bean. Made his move right, cut back to the left, and takes it down to the 35-yard line. Johnson and Banizak on the stop. Banizak getting the first hit at the Pittsburgh 35-yard line, a gain of five yards. And let's see what they've got up front. Mike Ken playing at left tackle. Dave Scott is at left guard. Jeff Van Note is at center. R.C. Thielman at right guard. Warren Bryant at right tackle. The formation is strong left with Jim Mitchell, the tight end. And the give is to stand back, and he is nailed. Lauren Cave firing through to get him three yards behind the line of scrimmage on a play calculated to sweep left. And Caves came firing through to nail the runner back at the 38-yard line. A loss of three yards. It will be third and eight. Great play by the right linebacker. He just fired past R.C. Thielman, a big guard in the Atlanta offensive line, to make a just a fine play. Caves out. Dungey in. Fifth defensive back. They're using Mitchell as a wide out to the left. Slot man to the right. Bartkowski throwing and hitting his man, Bubba Bean, but he can't hold it at the 35. Bean came out of the backfield and made an out move at the 35-yard line. Jack Cam was on him. He took the pass and didn't hold it. Incomplete. John James, the Atlanta punter, in there. James came into the ball game with an average of 40.9 per kick. Randy Rudershan is downfield to receive. The punt will carry left to right. James standing at his own 46-yard line. Takes the snap and kicks it. Wobbly. Rudershan on the run. Takes it at the 13. Over the 15. And they got him corralled. And they're going to take him standing up all the way back. Mike Esposito, the former Boston College running back, got him. And would not allow him to advance. They're going to mark it at the 14-yard line. Pittsburgh leading 17 to nothing. Time out in the ballgame. We'll be right back. When a car gives you what you expect and a little more, you know you're getting your money's worth. And that's just what you get from your Chrysler Plymouth dealer with Plymouth Arrow. Especially now that it's end of year. Well, with Benny Cunningham out indefinitely, of course, the question that hits my mind is what is the trading deadline? The trading deadline happens to be Tuesday. You'll recall the trader, Steelers traded for Big Paul Seymour of the Buff Bills, a, a large tight end, but he turned out to be damaged merchandise, and it kept Randy Grossman on the squad. He's now the only tight end. First down and 10 yards to go. Sidney Thornton is in the backfield for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and Thornton hits straight ahead. Bolton Kuykendall catches him uh, short of the 20-yard line. 
mark the ball at the 18 and a half yard line. Got Larry Brown, who has that great experience at tight end, but he also is injured right. at the moment. They go to a three-man front. Gates, Paulina, and Merrill, four linebackers. Three down linemen, quick pitch to Blyer, has the blocking, swings right, leaps over the 20, has fumbled the football up field, and it is out of bounds, Pittsburgh's ball. Pittsburgh had the last possession of it. Blyer was making time out there, got to about the 25-yard line, and went down under a screen of Atlanta players, lost the football up ahead of him, a Steeler went after, couldn't get it, then an Atlanta Falcon hit it and knocked it out of bounds. And, of course, it's the team with last possession. Not the last touch, but the last possession. And Blyer was the last one to possess the football, so it's a first down at the 35. That's right. It rolled, rolled out ahead of Moon Mellons. He couldn't get it. And then Jeff Yates of the Falcons, the defensive left end, he touched it but didn't have control, and it went out of bounds. First down, 10. Blyer comes out to the left. Bradshaw fires to the right. And the ball pulled in by Sidney Thornton over the 40, and he goes to the 44-yard line. Robert Pennywell made the tackle. Flyer flared left, and Thornton took off to the right. And they will mark that football at the 44, a yard short of a first down, a nine-yard gain. No, Franco. Uh, mm-hmm, no, Franco. After 85 yards in the first half for 86. Mike Webster goes over the football. John Stallworth to the left. Flyer. Is a wing back. Nope. Blyer is in the uh, backfield, and Thornton becomes the wing back to give to Rocky. Rocky made a move to the left, cut back to the right, comes down inside the 50, fumbles the football, and Atlanta has it. Rocky Blyer coughed it up at the Atlanta 48 yard line. There will be days like these. Frank Reed recovered the ball. Tommy Pridebore got the hit on Rocky Blyer at the 48 yard line, and that will be the Second fumble lost by the Steelers. Steelers football continues after this timeout. Arby's of Altoona at 524 West Plank Road. Arby's is a big juicy, fresh wholesome, lean, luscious. Arby's is a big juicy, fresh wholesome, lean, luscious. Arby's is a big juicy. Before or after the big game, bring your hungry team in for a delicious meal at Arby's. 524 West Plank Road, Altoona. Arby's, second to none. Arby's is a big juicy, fresh from the delicious. Arby's is a big juicy, fresh from the delicious. Arby's is a big juicy, delicious change of taste. There's a feeling of free all around you, moving naturally. Now the comfort has found you, you're living and breathing in J-Mart's on the bell. Get the feeling free style of J-Mart for your man at this injury that'll keep him out indefinitely. It's a shame because Benny had set his goal on, uh, set his sights on nothing less than making uh, all pro this year. And he was some kind of offensive weapon for the Steelers. He had 14 catches coming into this game for 293 yards. He was averaging almost 21 yards a catch. It's a shame. Atlanta at their own 48. Back here talking to a player on the bench who has a hood on. That might be Blyer. I'm not sure whether it's an offensive lineman. Here's Barkowski throwing on the near side. Overthrows his target, Jim Mitchell, at the 43-yard line out of bounds. Ron Johnson over to cover. Nothing to cover. It was an incomplete pass. Atlanta has now thrown as many passes in the second half as it threw in the entire first half, and we are not to the midway point in the third quarter. That's what we expected. Mm -hmm. Barkowski now in with six completions out of ten attempts. He threw one interception. Wally Francis flanks left, and Dennis Pearson splits right. Second down, ten. Barkowski back there, drills it down the middle, caught by the tight end, Jim Mitchell, at the 43-yard line. He's immediately horse-collared by Tony Dungy. Dungy, the articulate young man from Minnesota in his second year in the league, marked the ball at the 42-and-a-half-yard line. Atlanta has... Third down, about a yard to go. Jack Ham blitzing on that play, but the Falcons picking him up nicely. John Kolb is the player shaking up. Tom Leslie notes after the helmet is taken off. 
So Colb's getting attention from trainer Bob Miley. And it's that neck area. I think that's the same thing he's had problems with before. Two tight ends. They give the ball to stand back. And he wheels over the right side. Lambert nails him, but not in time. He'll take it to the 40 and a half yard line. He'll have a first down. Jack Lambert got the tackle. Haskell stand back, gets the first down for the Atlanta Falcons. Steelers have Greenwood, Green, Banizak, and White. Ham, Lambert, and Chaves are the linebackers. Johnson, Blunt on the corners, and Wagner and Shell are the safeties. First down, 10. Atlanta trailing 17 to nothing at the Steeler 40 and a half yard line. Steve Bartkowski out of California hands it off to Haskell Standback. He slips and goes down at the 40. Donnie Shell covered him. He was making his move to the right, and as he cut back, he went down. He picks up one yard, and Dennis Pearson returns, replacing Billy Rickman. Well, Standback gained over 800 yards for the Falcons last year, really coming into his own, but today he's having a tough time of it, gaining just a little better than 30 yards so far in the afternoon. Tony Dungy is the fifth defensive back, replaces Warren Taves. Second down, nine. This time, Bartkowski rolling out to the left and throwing downfield, and it was too high. Down at the 26-yard line, Wallace Francis had done a hook. Mel Blunt was right there with him. Nobody could reach the football as Bartkowski threw too long. So they look at third down and nine. The Atlanta Falcons. A franchise that has been struggling to get something rolling since its inception in pro football. They've had the same ownership. They've had more coaches probably than anybody else in that length of time. They built a stadium for them in record time down there. Here it is, the big third down play. Nine to go. Wide outs both ways. Barkowski calls the signals. And Barkowski drops straight back. Now he lets it fly, and it is caught at the 21-yard line. Mike Wagner brings down Billy Rickman. And Rickman that time crossed up Jack Lambert. Lambert had fallen back to give the coverage, and Rickman made a move in front of Lambert and got away from him, caught the ball, and Wagner brought him down. Yes, it's a pretty deep distance for a linebacker to travel with, the, with Rickman. And uh, Rickman also then dropped in behind Tony Dungy, who was coming over to help but uh, not in time. Cody a little disgusted with himself. Slot left formation. Atlanta at the Pittsburgh 19-yard line. And the give is to the fullback, Bubba Bean, and he cracks down over the 15. Goes inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. Lambert and Ham there to bring him down. Bean is 5'11", 195. He is a second-year man from Texas A&M. And if you've come along late into our broadcast, there's better than five minutes remaining in the third quarter. The Steelers leading 17 to nothing, but Atlanta threatening at the 14-yard line of the Steelers. Second down and five yards to go. Wide set in the backfield. They'll look for heavy protection for Barkowski. If indeed, nope, he's going to hand it off, and it's Standback. Standback Uh-oh. waiting in there, fumbles the football, but Atlanta has it. Atlanta recovers it. You saw the ball get out of Standback's grasp, and then you saw a big man down in underneath reach out and grab it, and that has to be the center. Jeff Van Note recovered the fumble. Dwight White made the tackle. That is Atlanta's second fumble, losing one. Pittsburgh's had three, losing two. And the ball is at the 11 and a half yard line. Jeff Van Note, who anchors that offensive line, is in his 10th year from Kentucky. Mike Ken, Dave Scott to his left, R.C. Thielman, Warren Bryant to his right. They have a strong right formation. And a quick pitch to the left side. Bubba B breaks the tackle and then is nailed by Dwight White. Slips away from Lawrence Hayes at the 15. Then Dwight White tied into him, aided on the play by Mike Wagner, and got him at the 13-yard line. So the drive is stopped. Fred Steinfort is on. 
Steinford has been having grief with his kicking. Earlier today, he missed a 34-yard attempt. Now the line of scrimmage is the 13-and-a-half-yard line, and his holder's at the 21. This is a 31-yard try for Steinford. 31-yard attempt. He kicks it. It is no good. Steinford has missed it again. We'll be right back. Fred Steinford earlier had been wide to the right on a 34-yarder. Now he's been wide to the left on a 31-yarder. I guess Walter Barr, the Penn State coach, did not affect a miracle. The Falcons this week will be shopping, I guarantee you. They may go to Booth Lustig even to replace Steinford, but I think Steinford is ticketed out of Atlanta. Uh, Lehman Bennett, the head coach, had said that it was a last-ditch try sending him to Penn State. In fact, it, it seemed to, to require some pressure to get him to go there, uh, but it hasn't worked. So the Steelers now will put the ball in play at their 20. Franco Harris back into the into the Steeler backfield after being out for a series. The Jets are leading Buffalo 42 to 7 in the third quarter. Can you believe that? Mm. First down and 10 yards to go. Pittsburgh at its own 20-yard line. Bradshaw hands it off to Franco, runs to the left, cuts back. He broke by one man at the line of scrimmage and brings it to the 25. Greg Brazina on the tackle. 6'1", 221-pound, 11-year veteran from Houston. And Jeff Yates, the defensive end from Boston College. Should be like a homecoming today for Mike Cruzic. A lot of these BC guys in here. I don't know whether he'll talk with Steinford after the game or not. Steinford may be sitting down there with a towel over his head. Steinford's a clever guy. I'll tell you why later, Jack. Okay, don't forget. Here's Bradshaw giving the ball to Blyer. Blyer running to the right, tripped up, and then he picks up a couple more yards. They had him at the line of scrimmage. Roland Lawrence and Robert Pennywell finally bring him down. He slipped across the line of scrimmage. Mark it at the 27, third down, two and a half yards to go for the Steelers. They lead 17 to nothing. Steinford had spent his boyhood in Germany, Jack, and when he went to college up there at Boston College, he wisely chose his major. You know what he studied? Languages. German. German. <laughs> Double wing, Blyer in the slot to the left. Now they shift, and Blyer's in the backfield. Set back there with Thornton. Fake by Bradshaw. He's deep. Running to his left and throwing, and he hits Stallworth at the 41. Stallworth breaks the tackle over the 45, the 50, the 45, the 40. He's at the Atlanta 30, the 20, down to the 15, the 10. Cut from behind, and brought down at the two-yard line. Johnny Stallworth took the pass. Great running before Roland Lawrence brought him down from behind. At the Atlanta two-yard line. He broke a tackle by Rick Bias, the defensive back. He seemed forward and broke a tackle by the linebacker, Greg Brazina. Finally hauled on by Lawrence at the two-yard line, a gain of 71 yards. Bradshaw to John Stallworth, who is a tough guy to bring down, not a burly guy. But time and again has, been, has demonstrated that when he's got that football and a little room to maneuver, you better get him tight or you ain't got him. Moose Stallworth up well over 300 yards in pass receiving. Great running by Stallworth. Covered most of that yardage, or better than half of it on his own running. At the two-yard line, give to Franco, and he's in trouble. And he finally leans back to the line of scrimmage. Headed in, went to the right, could find no running room, and Jeff Merrill and Fulton Kuykendall had him nailed, and he finally leaned back up to the two-yard line. T-Bell coming on. And Steve Corson coming on, so we'll go to two tight ends and try to punch it in from this point. And uh, a Falcon is injured, and the trainer is out on the field to look at Fulton Kuykendall, and they're getting set to send a replacement in, which should be Ron McCartney for Kuykendall. So McCartney, a second-year man from Tennessee, is on. 
Well, John Stallworth had begun, begun the season sensationally, and though his performance didn't tail off, uh, Bradshaw's passes increasingly began to go to Lynn Swan. So Stallworth came into this game with 13 catches compared to Swan's 27, but he has electrified the crowd here. Two tight ends. Randy Gross from the wing back to the right side at the two-yard line. Bradshaw to Blyer, flag on the play. Blyer fights his way down to the end zone. Penalty marker was down. It was against Atlanta. So Rocky Blyer has taken it in. Atlanta was offside. And Blyer, fighting over the right side, reached out and put that ball in the end zone for the touchdown. Pittsburgh moves its lead out to 23 to nothing. Good old Sam Davis, 34 years old, 12 years in the league, gave Rocky the block he needed to slip in there, and then he lunged across, thrust the ball across the goal line, and the Steelers fatten up their lead. They're leading 23 to nothing as Jarella lines up to kick the extra point. 80 yards, five plays, the big play, covering 70 yards, a pass and run. Bradshaw to John Stallworth. Craig Colquitt holds at the 10-yard line, and Roy Jarella tries for the point after. Jarella kicks it. It is good. The score is 24 to nothing in favor of the Pittsburgh Steelers here at Three River Stadium. And a reminder for those of you listening to WTAE in Pittsburgh, be sure to stay with us after the game for Steelers Hotline. This year, after every home game, we open up the lines for you to call in and talk Steelers. Byron and I will be in the Steeler offices with Bob Coppler at the studio. Join us for the Steeler Hotline right after this game. Well, I see in the second quarter the St. Louis Cardinals still looking for their first win. They're leading the Baltimore Colts 10-7. The Steelers needed only five plays to go 80 yards uh, for their touchdown, and it is yet another lengthy drive uh, for that Steeler office offense, which has been just dynamite this season. But again, the question now is, what will the Steelers do now that they have only one healthy tight end? And I'm talking about Randy Grossman, who is not a big tight end. Will they go frantically to the market this week with the trading deadline coming up Tuesday and try to swing a deal with one of the AFC teams? Or, or uh, will they just simply take the tight end out of their passing attack? Well, Randy, of course, can catch, so that's perhaps a little extreme. But in any case, it's a problem as you contemplate going to Cleveland next week with a 6-0 record and hoping to keep it going. Let's pause now for station identification. You're listening to Steeler Football 78 on WVAM-FM, Altoona, Country FM 100. Here is Jarella, ready to kick it off. Right to left. High. Coming down the middle, Dennis Pearson at the 6. Out over the 10, the 15, the 20, 25, the 30, and to the 32-yard line. Good try to strip the ball made by Robin Cole unsuccessfully. The runner held on to the football and was brought down by Dennis Winston at the 32-and-a-half-yard line. First down 10 for Atlanta. I don't want to be uh, looking for something to carp about. The Steelers are leading 24 to nothing, but their kickoff coverage which has been very good, has been just awful today. Mark Kowski calling the signals, first and ten. Mark Kowski is back. He wants to pass, and they're after him. They chase him out of the pocket, and nail him. Joe Green got him at the 26-yard line. Joe Green nailed him as he came out of the pocket to the right, and that is the fourth time this afternoon that Steve Barkowski has been sacked. Yep, L.C. Greenwood almost got him first. It would have been L.C.'s third sack, but he couldn't quite hang on to him. He ran him into Joe, however, and Joe was glad to accept the prize. Go to second down now and 16 yards to go. Lauren Taves comes out and Tony Dungy in as a fifth defensive back. Wideouts both ways for Atlanta. Hand off to Standback, running to the left, cuts back, and dives to the 30-yard line. Haskell Standback brought down by Lauren Taves and by Jack Lambert at the 30-yard line. Make that L.C. Greenwood and Lauren Taves at the 30-yard line. He looked for a hole, thought he had found it, 
and then it was closed up quickly. So he brings it back to third and 13. Yes, Mel Bunt, the cornerback, had the outside closed off. He had nowhere to go. Incidentally, Joe Green's sack of a moment ago, not only was the Steelers fifth, but it marked the third straight week the Steelers have had five sacks. Billy Rickman, Wallace Francis, and Alfred Jackson are all wide receivers, but the gun sounds the end of the third quarter. And the score is Pittsburgh, 24, Atlanta, nothing. Now, as we enter the fourth quarter, you might expect to see Mike Kruzik warming up on the sideline for the Steelers, but he is not. So I suppose Noah is going to uh, continue with Terry Bradshaw rather than put him on ice and make sure he comes out of this game with his knee no worse off than when he entered it. I don't know. Last week, I thought he was right to have Bradshaw in there at the finish when he was hurt. But right now, I think I'd be ready with a 24-point lead to go to Kruzik and give him some experience and uh, take no chances with Terry Bradshaw. But again, nobody warming up, neither Kruzik nor Stout on the sideline. Okay, Atlanta's ball, third down, 13 at their 30-yard line. Got some cat over there on the dugout on the far side dancing back and forth. The guards can't get to him, and he's trying to throw a hex on the Atlanta Falcons. Looks like he stole one of your outfits from your wardrobe, Myron. Oh, they've chased him out of the stadium. Here's Mark Kowski back deep. Look out. There comes his pass up to the 50, caught by Billy Rickman, and Rickman is stopped at the 48-yard line. Stopped upright by Mike Wagner. Billy Rickman, 5'11", 172-pounder from Louisiana Tech. Makes the catch, and Atlanta moves quickly to a first down at the 48-yard line. I'm puzzled. A piece of white cloth fell to the ground after Warren Caves gave Rickman a yank, and I don't know if it was off his jersey or he carries a hanky down there. Rickman to the left. Francis to the right. And here is Bartkowski throwing to... The tight end, Jim Mitchell, and he can't hold it at the 45-yard line as he's belted by Donnie Shell. Incomplete. Sending the tight end toward the sideline, far side of the field. And Shell breaks it up. 15 passes tried. Nine of them completed. One intercepted by Mel Blunt. And it is second down, 10. The ball is at the Pittsburgh 47 and a half. The receiver juggling the ball that time. You cannot afford to do that when the torpedo is in the vicinity and the shell arrived. Francis to the right. Dennis Pearson to the left. Bartkowski rolling right. Looking, looking, looking. Then drilling it over there. And it is caught at the sideline. Ruled a good catch right on the sideline. He hit Wallace Francis. Sneaked in behind the secondary coverage at the Pittsburgh 32 and a half. Tommy Shell and Mike Wagner. We're there, and the ball came right into the crowd, and a fine catch made. So it is a first down for Atlanta. And it was a good call. He was clearly in bonds as he caught that ball with Shell and Wagner all over him. A nice catch for Mr. Wallace, or Mr. Wallace Francis. At the 32-and-a-half-yard line, the Falcons are set. First down, 10. Barkowski hands it off, and Bubba Bean digging forward over the right side. Goes inside the 30, down to the 28-yard line. There we have a little scuffle. The tackle for Pittsburgh was made by Jack Lambert. And he has been challenged by one of the Falcons. Officials step in very quickly. And it's going to be a short five-yard gain, second down and a long five to go. At the Pittsburgh 28-yard line, Atlanta has been there before today and has not been able to score. Two field goal tries have gone wide. They put two wide outs to the right in a slot formation. Markowski doesn't like it calls timeout. There's a little confusion as they came out of the huddle to line up. And Bartkowski has something to say to Dennis Pearson, the rookie, as he goes to the far side to talk to the coaching staff. Jack Lambert comes to the near side. 
Time out in the ball game. Pittsburgh leading 24 to nothing. We'll be right back. Got a load to pick up, truck. remaining in the ball game. The Steelers looking like they're going to be 6-0 and at the end of the day. Last week, of course, they became the first Steeler team ever to win their first five games. Bart Koski in the second half has been mixing them up much more than he did in the first half when he concentrated on the ground attack almost to the exclusion of the pass. Here they go, the Falcons at the 28. Oh, the football goes Jeff Van Oates. They flank left, split a man to the right side. He gets hit on coverage from Ron Johnson. Once giving the flanker about 10 yards. Barkowski back. Barkowski throwing wobbly right into the arms of Lars Haynes. He's at the 20, the 25, he's to the 30, and down he goes. Dennis Pearson, the intended receiver, and Barkowski threw a beautiful strike to Lawrence James. And James gets his first interception of the season. Yes, he picked it off at the 18 and took it out to the 30-yard line. So first Mel Bunt with an interception, and now Lauren Taves. The Steelers have two of them, and they're in nice shape at their 30-yard line. Would you say that Taves was on his toes, T-O-E-W-S? Ouch. <laughs> well, you're on your Taves to point that out. Steelers football continues after this timeout. Attention all sports fans, it won't be long now. Yes, in just a short while, the new Warner Cable TV system will be in use. And the new system will be bringing more of the best of the world of sports right into your home. Instead of just one or two games and one or two sports to choose from, you'll have several games in almost every sport. Different sports, different teams, all brought right into your home with crystal clear reception. Warner Cable of Altoona. Now, more than ever, bringing the world of sports to you. Want a tough snowblower that's going to save you time and effort all winter long? Then get a John Deere snowblower from Austin Hardware. The rugged 8-horsepower model cuts a wide 26-inch path, and the new 10-horsepower blower clears a 32-inch swath in a single pass. Both have five forward speeds plus reverse. Get the John Deere 8-horsepower blower for $735 and the 10-horsepower model for $845. Buy them now and get a free electric starter kit. Rugged John Deere snowblowers that'll get you through the entire winter from Austin Hardware, Route 220 Greenwood. Barry Bradshaw apparently will continue to quarterback the Steelers, although Kruzik is now warming up down below. Bradshaw is 9 for 13 for close to 200 yards, 187 yards, no interception. I suppose he's going to let him have it for one more attempted drive. First down, 10 to go. Double wing formation for the Steelers. Thornton is in a slot to the left. Big backfield. Ball goes to Thornton coming around left to right. He swings around the right corner and up to the 35-yard line. Coming out of the slot for the deep handoff, Thornton took it from Bradshaw, wheeled over to the right side, the right side. Tom Moriarty made the tackle. Moriarty playing one of the safety positions for the Atlanta Falcons. Jim Stanky is here, isn't he, in there? No, he isn't. Roland Lawrence is in there. Tommy Pridemore has disappeared. Stanky is in there. Six-year veteran of Southwest Texas State. Played with the New York Giants. Pitch back to... Franco, and he's chased out of bounds at the 38-yard line. So he has Thornton coming around to lead the blocking. Kuykendall 
got to Franco and chased him out of bounds. And it's going to be about two and a half yards short of a first down on the third down play. See who they have in that Atlanta situation. Jeff Yates, Jim Bailey, Wilson Paulina is playing at right tackle. The Samoan, second year from San Jose State. We talked about him in the preseason. His mother brought the family over here when the kid was very young. She died when he was 13. And he sort of took care of himself out on the coast, went to San Jose State, and is a fine ball player. Jeff Merrow plays the right end position still. Bradshaw backs up, throws to the far side, and Stahl takes it at the 41 for a first down. The little curl to the sideline beyond Rick Bias, the cornerback, and Stallworth has the first down on the far side of the field. 21 of the uh, first downs recorded in this ball game have been by the Steelers, followed by the Atlanta Falcons. Bradshaw's thrown 14 passes, 10 of them completed, and Stallworth has caught four. Kruzik has been warming up down below and will be due to come on here before too much longer. First down, 10. Pittsburgh moving left to right in the final period. Bradshaw on a fake, his back deep. Now let's fly. There it is, the swan at the 45. He went down on the turf to take it. He was trying to get up, and he took a hit from Robert Pennywell. And Swan gets up and shakes it off at the Atlanta 44-yard line, but a penalty marker is down. And J.D. says that they may have the Falcons back there for roughing Bradshaw. Well, they do. And that's 15 yards tacked on to that reception for the 44, or rather 10. Let's see, five. He only marked off 10. The official wants him to go five more. 5, 10, 15. Yeah, now they've, now they've got it down inside the 30. 15 tacked on for rubbing the passer. I'll tell you, Terry Bradshaw has got some kind of statistics to take him presumably to the top of the NFL quarterback rankings. He trails only Joe Ferguson in the buff. Bills are having a bad day. Bradshaw now 11 for 15. No interceptions. Over 200 yards. Bradshaw back again. Here it goes out to the far side, and there's Stallworth down and over at the 15-yard line, eating that quarterback alive. Rick Bias unable to handle Johnny Stallworth, and Bradshaw lays it on the money, and Stallworth takes it out of bounds, takes it inbounds, and goes out of bounds at the 15-yard line. That is the 23rd first down. 16 passes thrown, 12 completed. And now he's fixing up his receivers. Stallworth has caught five. Swan has caught three. First down, 10, Pittsburgh. Cleveland now leading New Orleans 14 to 6 in the third quarter. First down, 10 at the Atlanta 15. Terry Bradshaw sets the Steelers, gives the ball to Sidney Thornton, running to the right, he'll need help. And he breaks the tackle and keeps his balance and goes down to the 11 yard line. Greg Brazina covered him after he broke away from Jeff Yates. And Wilson Paulina. They appeared to have him behind the 15, and he kept his balance, went down to the 11, picked up four yards. Yes, Sidney Thornton is running hard. He was doing it on his own there for the most part, and Terry Bradshaw is continuing to pass the ball beautifully, even though he's having to do it with that big Benny Cunningham, who was hurt in the first period. That's interesting. Dewey McLean is a fourth linebacker, replacing Jim Bailey. They go into a three-down lineman situation. Now they're slipping another backer up in there tight. They play little games with that defense. Bradshaw's back. Four guys are coming. He fires into the end zone, and he throws it over everybody. I think he saw trouble coming, saw everybody covered, and he threw it safely. Tom Moriarty had a blanket on Lynn Swan. What are these, pigeons or seagulls flying around? Looks like we're playing at Kezar Stadium. <laughs> well, if I had a guess, I'd say pigeons, since I don't smell any saw there. Now that's a seagull, believe it. Look at his wings. And we got a lot of them, whatever they are. I don't know. I hadn't noticed that Three Rivers was particularly a draw for pigeons, but... Tommy Pridemore back in replacing Jim Steinke. Now let's see what they're going to do. Pittsburgh in a wide slot formation to the left. Bradshaw's back. Now he drills it right down to the goal line to Johnny Stallworth. And it's a touchdown. 
goal was cut at the goal line was hit by Rick Bias and knocked back out to the two-yard line. And the official on the far side of the field said they broke the plane of the goal line for the TD on a 15-yard strike to Stallworth. Well, I'll tell you, Jack, I guess they're ruling that he was driven out of the end zone before he came down, because when he came down, he fumbled the football. It bounced underneath him, and then a big falcon landed on him to take the football away. And I suppose that ruling is that he was carried out of the end zone. Now they're calling it back. They would seem to be overruling his the official. Feet, his feet never touched the ground in the end zone, that's for sure. Now the official has made an explanation to the crowd, and we can't detect what he said. 18 passes thrown by Bradshaw, 13 of them completed. Jarella will go for the point after. Craig Colquitt is the holder. It's 30 to nothing. The ball is down. Jarella kicks it, and it is good. Jarella has had a perfect day. It is 31 to nothing in favor of the Steelers. And the with that healthy lead, the Steelers have run up. We'll be right back. If you need a full-sized family car, and you... Well, it has been no mercy here at Three Rivers Stadium as Noel keeping Bradshaw in the game into the fourth quarter uh, has seen the score go up to 31 to nothing now as Bradshaw took them 70 yards in eight plays. Roy Jarella set the kick off. The Steelers will be 6-0 and as they go into Cleveland for the big one next Sunday. They're working on a shutout. They haven't had one since the opening game of last season when they beat San Francisco 27 to nothing. Jarella kicks it high and short. At the 15, Pearson, out over the 20, the 25, running to his right, trying to get the sideline at the 30, the 35, and it's wheeled out of bounds on the far side of the field by Randy Rudershad. Return is to the 38 and a half yard line, and that once again should bring Cope's wrath down on the special team. Should bring what? Your wrath down on the special team. Yeah, I, I'm returning like a broken record. At Detroit in the fourth quarter, Seismith the Fuga, a 26-yard touchdown pass. The Wash Redskins take the lead over Detroit, who had an upset in the making, but the score now is 14 to 12 in the fourth quarter. Still a tough situation coming off a tough Monday night game and getting ready for one the next Sunday, you know? Yeah. Slot left, wide out to the right. Ricky Patton is in the backfield. Bartkowski drops back. Bartkowski going for the ball. Look out, we may intercept. And fight for the ball incomplete at the 18-yard line. Dennis Pearson with double coverage from Mel Blunt and Donnie Shell. And it is incomplete. They threw the Los Angeles Sprague all over Pearson. <laughs> he could not get the football. You think Donnie Shell likes to be described as a Los Angeles smog? I don't know, but it was just sort of a blanket. Shell is coming out. Now what have we got in here? We got uh, Gary Dunn, Tom Beasley, Steve Furness, John Banizak in the uh, front four. Some substitutions made. Tony Dungy playing back there in place of Shell. Bartkowski drilling one. Caught at the Pittsburgh 41-yard line. Pulled in by Wallace Francis. Breaks the tackle, gives ground. Back to the 44 and is brought down. You guessed it, Jack Lambert right there along with Lauren Caves. So Francis made a neat catch, bounced around, backed up to the 44 and lost three yards after the catch. Yep, he bounced off a hard hit by Tony Dungy. He stayed on his feet, but he didn't gain any more yardage. In fact, I think he lost a couple as he bounced off that hit. I show Bradshaw with 18 passes thrown, 13 of them completed on the day. And he threw for a couple of touchdowns. All right, they got wide outs both ways. Got a man in the slot on the right side. Markowski is back there looking, and he fires downfield. Almost intercepted. Mike Wagner coming in front of the intended receiver, Wallace Francis. Knocked it down, went for the interception, could not hold it inside the 25. Fine play by the young man from Western Illinois. No interceptions, I might add, to your Bradshaw stats, and that's important in his quarterback ratings. But the big thing is that uh, he's keeping the Steelers undefeated. Saw with five receptions for 114 yards, and that matches his career high for catches. All right, 
side. Lauren Taves out. Donnie Shell comes in as the fifth defensive back. Barkowski is deep. Let's fly to the far side. Leaping try over there by Francis, and he has his pins taken out from under him by Ron Johnson. Incomplete. And Francis is shaken up. He's getting up. Steelers secondary is playing super football. Super tough football. Oh, they sure have. I show Swan with uh, three catches. That takes him up to 30 on the season. Cunningham, 16. Stallworth has had five. Has him up to 19. Third down, 10. Steve Barkowski right down the middle, and it is broken up by Dungey. And it falls into the arms of a receiver down on the ground, taken away from him. They're still playing. The whistle apparently is tough. Mike Wagner has the ball, and the Falcon has hold of him. The Falcon, who caught the ball, was down on the ground. The flag is down, and we get an interference call against Pittsburgh. Dungey came over and broke up the pass. It went into the arms of James Wright, who was lying flat on the turf. So I guess they will rule that Tony knocked him down. And it's pass interference, moving the ball down to the 29-yard line. Now, that's a bizarre play. Well, he fired it up the middle, and a Steeler got a hand on it. I'm not sure who that Steeler was, and it landed right smack in the re intended receiver's hands as he lay on his back. Yeah, right. And Wagner wound up down on the turf, clutching each other with the ball in between. Fourteenth first down for the Falcons. And of course, when that guy's lying on his back and the ball lands in his hands, as soon as he's touched, he's done. So as soon as Wagner lands on him, he's done, and the ball's dead, right? You know, Wagner was challenging for the football, I guess. Yeah. You, you watch that replay, it looked like a penalty is on Dungy for pass interference. Well, he was playing it like he used to at Minnesota. All out. A reminder for those of you listening to WTAE in Pittsburgh, be sure to listen with us after the game to stay with us after the game for Steelers Hotline. This year, after every home game, we're coming at you with open phone lines from the Steeler offices, and you can call in and talk Steelers. Jack Fleming and I will be in the Steeler offices while Bob Coppler is back at the studios beating your scores and interviews with uh, correspondence at vital games still going on around the league. Oh, we have a lot of fun, so join us for our all-new Steelers hotline right after this ball game. Well, the Baltimore Colts trailing now out ahead, pardon me, of the St. Louis Cardinals, 14 to 10 in the second period. Green Bay, the surprise team of the National Football League this year, with Nifty running from Turndale Middleton and quarterbacking from David Whitehurst, Green Bay leading the Chicago Bears at halftime, three to nothing in a divisional battle. The division, of course, being the central division of the National Football Conference. Tampa Bay leading Kansas City, ten to three. The defenses appear to have caught up with uh, the Kansas City offense that new coach Marv Levy installed at wing T. And that is a halftime score. Tampa Bay 10, Kansas City 3. The Cleve Brownies out of in front of New Orleans. 14 to 9 in the second period. New Orleans giving them a battle. Here goes a man at the Steelers. 29 first down. Atlanta moving right to left. First down 10 at the Pittsburgh 29-yard line. Steve Barkowski is quarterback throughout the entire afternoon for the Falcons. The rush is on him and he gets it off anyway. And we over incomplete. Now here's what he saw coming at him over the top of everybody, sailing like a jet fighter, Jack Lambert, coming right in on Barkowski. He unloaded the ball almost out of the park. He may have thrown that one all the way to the river. And nobody was over there except photographers. And Lambert was flying at him, literally flying. He looked uh, like one of those overhead pigeons, but was uh, considerably larger. He looked like Superman, sailing through there. Second down, 10. Wide outs both ways. Hand off, given to Ricky Patton, running to the right, makes his cut down over the 25, the 20, look out, he's brought down at the 16-yard line by Donnie Schell. Mike Wagner got him. Mike Wagner, 6'2", 200 pounds, eight-year veteran for Western Illinois, knocked out last year with 
something akin to a broken neck. Set out the whole season. Came back when a lot of people wouldn't even want to walk across the street, much less play pro football. And he is playing. 15th first down for Atlanta. The Falcons are shooting for consolation points. They trail 31 to nothing. There at the Pittsburgh 16. Crowd imploring the defense to hold him. Bartkowski calling the signals. Bartkowski drops back. And in fires down to the end zone. Broken up and they throw the flag. He went to Wallace Francis. Bill Blunt was there. Tony Dungy there. Jack Lambert there. And they dropped the flag and Lambert is fit to be tied. Pass interference will take it right down to the one-yard line. A 15-yard mark-off. Well, Lambert was there and Mel Blunt was generously draped over the receiver and I really can't uh, beef at the call even though the crowd doesn't like it. We'll be back after this pause on the Steelers Football Network. All right, at the one-yard line, the running backs are Bubba Bean and Ricky Patton. Two tight ends, swing back right. Give us to Bubba Bean, he meets a stone wall. He is not going to make it. Got a flag down way over in the far corner of the end zone. I don't know what that's about. Crowd is chanting defense. Pittsburgh was offside. Half the distance to the goal line puts it at the half yard line and they run first down over again. Yeah, they move it about four inches. Jack's flat at the top of that front wall that time, clutching the ball player's helmet through my glasses. I can see Jack Splat's teeth gnashing as he clawed at that helmet, determined to throw that man back. But it's offside Steelers, so they're at the four-inch line. Keep in mind that we have Gary Dunn, Tom Beasley, Steve Furness, and John Banizak in that front four. Again, two tight ends. And this time, he goes to Ricky Patton. And he loses the football. There's a dive for it. He's trying to get in over the right side. Atlanta has the football. As he scooted to the right, the rookie from Jackson State left the football behind him. And coming up with the football, Mike Ken, their number one draft choice. And they lose a yard back a little outside of the one-yard line. The ball was fumbled back to Bartkowski, but he couldn't get a handle on it. I don't know, uh, Ken or Dave Scott uh, coming up with the football, but at any rate, they did lose a yard. That football is going all over the place behind the center. Boy, Lambert is steaming. He's getting them fired up. All right, they're going to run into it again. Second down, a yard and a half to go. Markowski gives it off. There's a fumble. Pittsburgh recovers. Markowski hurries the handoff to Bubba Bean. It was never there. Gary Dunn recovered it for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Meantime, a Steeler is hurt on the play. The defense takes over at the four-yard line. John Banizak, I believe, is the man down. And you would think from the reaction of this crowd that the Steelers had just made a goal line stand in the closing minutes of the Super Bowl. They're leading 31 to nothing. I've just heard more noise than I've heard in this joint all season. Will you explain that, please? Well, Jack Lambert got into uh, firing them up. Well, them who gave the points are home free. I don't understand it. There's no issue at stake, but they love that goal line stand to the Steeler crowd. However, it may have been a costly one because the injured Steeler is still down and being they want attended to. shut out. The, the issue is the pride in the defense. That's John Banizak down there who's injured. He's getting up. There he comes. A little bit wobbly. He's up there. What a stand. They gave them the ball. Listen to the crowd chatting defense. Listen to this. The defense is off the field and they're chatting defense. Mike Kruzik comes on the quarterback in place of Terry Bradshaw. 6'1", 205 in his third year from Boston College. He gets the ball at the four-yard line. Okay, and clarifying the Bradshaw to Stallworth touchdown pass, the official's explanation, which we weren't able to hear, was exactly as we speculated, that Stallworth was up in the air in the end zone and was carried out before he could land uh, in the pay dirt. Jim Smith is in as a wide receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Young man who broke his ankle in uh, preseason training. Got back into action last week. 
on caught that controversial pass on which Bradshaw was injured. And by the way, another report from the bench tells us uh, Banizak uh, had his bell rung. That was the extent of his injury. Jim Smith to the right, T. Bell to the left. Thornton in the slot to the left. And here's the gift to Franco. Heads left, cuts back to the right, out over the 10, brings it up to the 15-yard line. They're playing in this ball game like it were a tie or like they were behind. Jim Stanky made the tackle. And Franco Harris has his first 100-yard game of the season. I have unofficial stats. <laughs> Give him 104 yards. He now has 29 100-yard games, and six of them again have been against the Cleveland Browns. The scoreboard advises us, even though the Steelers aren't playing the Cleveland Browns today, so I find that an interesting morsel that I will... Uh, dwell on until midnight at least. But anyhow, the Franco has the first one. Noel told me last week after the game, I said, why'd you rest Franco in a ball game? You bench him? He says, no. He says, I was resting his charry horse. Franco then told me, he says, I was running okay. My charry horse wasn't bothering with me. Noel had said, when he's 100%, you'll see his first 100-yard game, so I guess he's 100%. Wide double wing. Here comes Thornton. Handoff goes to Thornton, coming to the right as a blocker up over the 20, the 25. Thornton coming out of the slot left. Taking the deep handoff, running to the right. Fulton Kuykendall made the stop. Steve Corson leading the blocking. Well, let's see what else we have. John Kolb is in there. Corson is in playing a guard. Webster's in at center. Mullen's still out there. Ray Penny's still out there. Franco coming out of the ball game. Listen to this crowd for Franco Harris. Johnny Shell greets him. John Benizak greets him. Franco greeted by Terry Bradshaw. And the Steelers are first and 10 at their own 24. Three cheers for Franco. He's money in the bank of. Gives straight ahead. Thornton, and he has to cut left. And they wheel after him and bring him down along the 26-yard line. Tom Moriarty up to make the stop. Clock shows 6.50 to play in the longest quarter of the season. I hadn't bothered you with that rhyme for a long time. I thought I would. Uh, what line was that? You'd for, what line was what rhyme was that? I'll give you what rhyme was that. <laughs> First down. Money in the banco. First down, Ted Franco in the banco. No, my, oh, never mind. Here comes Thornton out of the slot, and they give the ball straight ahead. That's not Thornton. That was Maxim out of the slot, and they give the ball to Thornton, and he hits straight ahead. With your poetry, I fail to note that Alvin Maxson, the much-traveled preseason man who burned up the highways between Pittsburgh and Washington and back again, carried the football. Five-year veteran from SMU, and the young man picked up three yards. Second down, seven. Nice fellow, the Max. Pardon me while I give a smoke to a Steeler coach. He's uh, a nervous wreck with the score leading 31 to nothing. He reaches over and needs a cigarette. <laughs> Second down, oh, I'm seven. more. Here's Kruzik. Hands it off to Thornton, and Thornton stumbled and went down. As he came forward, he had lost his footing and went down at the 29-yard line at the line of scrimmage covered by Wilson Paulina and Dewey McLean. You know, I think, Jack, that Noel is really determined, as of last week, to give Sidney Thornton work lest he go through a season, you know, not making any progress because he has great hopes for him. So I think... Uh, that that's become obvious today. He wants to get him lots of action whenever he can. All right, we're going to set our men out both ways. Jim Smith and T. Bell. And Kruzik is back, and they're after him. They have got him. Mike Kruzik is sacked. That's the first sack by the Grits Blitz. Dewey McLean, Jeff Merrill in there to get Mike Kruzik. Back at the 15-yard line, and Atlanta gets its first sack. And thanks to Sidney and Maxson and the others and company, I guess you could say it was Kruzik that got plenty of action that time. Wow, were they coming at him. Great Colquitt, who has done mostly holding this afternoon for the uh, place kicks, will punt for only the second time. Standing at his own one-yard line. Downfield, they got Billy Reichman. Rickman. Waiting for the punt. Rushes on, almost blocked. It's wobbly. Rickman wants the fair catch at the Pittsburgh 47. The kid got it away, but there was a great rush on him. They almost had him. So Colquitt 
punts at 32 yards from the line of scrimmage. Gets it out to the 47-yard line with no return. And the Atlanta Falcons moving right to left. Put the ball in play. They trail 31 to nothing as the Steelers have locked up their sixth consecutive win of the season. Markowski looking out to the right and firing wide of his intended receiver, Wallace Francis. Did a quick down and over along the 40-yard line and could not reach the football. Markowski is 11 of 23 with two interceptions. And uh, just to recap a bit, Barkowski in the first half only threw twice up until his final series. Only threw a total of five times in that first half and find himself in a come-from-behind situation and has not been able to do it. He's been being whitewashed. Slot man to the right. Tight end is split left. Barkowski will put it up again. Here it comes. Broke it up. Going right down the middle, heading for Wallace Francis and Tony Dungy. Made a diving lunge playing for the football. Dungy chastising himself for not getting the interception at the 38-yard line. Broke up the pass, and that defense is fired up. Yeah, Tony said before the season started that he'd like to get 10 interceptions this year. He came into this ball game with three. He had a shot at that one. Uh, Bartkowski is going to get intercepted again. I have a feeling at any moment because there have been several narrow escapes lately. Pittsburgh has four down linemen. Atlanta using a slot right formation and on defense, Lambert is directing traffic. Okay, Bartkowski is back there. He cocked his arm and fires it down to the 31 into the arms of Wallace Francis who immediately drops it. Francis had it. Markowski put it in on the money, and Francis dropped it. Steve Furness. Fred Anderson, the rookie from Prairie View. Tom Beasley and Gary Dunn have been working in that front four. Dunn comes off the field. Donnie Shell comes off the field. And the Steelers. Get an extra linebacker in there. And they're coming after Barkowski. He gets rid of the football, and it is caught by Dennis Pearson down at the 36-yard line. He's immediately thrown down by Ron Johnson. They're going to give him the 35-yard line. Now, the crowd reacts to that. He had the first down anyway. Ball is at the 35-yard line. That is the 17th first down for the Falcons. Pearson getting his first catch. Barkowski has completed 12 of 26 at the 35-yard line. Barkowski drills one right down to the 18-yard line caught by Billy Rickman, who immediately is brought down by Matt Carey. at the 17-yard line. Terry, the rookie from Florida State, made the tackle. 18 first downs now. Rickman getting his third catch of the afternoon. So the defense will get another test. At the 17-yard line, clock down to 247. Barkowski handing it off. This is Ricky Patton running to the left. Scoots around the corner, down over the 15 and is brought down around the 12-yard line. Tackle made by Larry Anderson. At the 12-yard line, he'll pick up about five and a half yards. Second down, four and a half to go. Next Sunday afternoon, we play the Cleveland Browns at the Lakefront Stadium in Cleveland. Tom Leslie, Luke Kreck, J.D. Fogarty, Myron and I will all be there. Up on the roof. This is Barkowski back. He goes for the end zone, and it's a touchdown. He hits Francis, and Francis put a move on rookie Ron Johnson. Got away from him. Johnson had him out of position, and he made a neat move around him, and Francis catches 
a touchdown pass and ends the shutout. That is the 28th pass thrown. Francis did not become a target until late here in the second half. And he gave a lesson that time to Ron Johnson. Fred Steinfurt will try for the extra point. He kicked it. It's 31 to 7. There's still a little confusion following the kick. And Lambert had something to say, and Tony Dungy had something to say to the officials. At any rate, Atlanta scores. And it comes in the fourth period with 2.03 to play. Six yard drive, seven plays, 12 yard pass to Francis for the touchdown. Now let's see what else is happening. They had the scores up there, they've taken them off. Fred Steinfurt is going to kick off, and they're going to go for a short one, I think. Here's Steinfurt kicking it short. Now who got it? Atlanta got it at the 50-yard line. Angled it off just a little bit to the right as they ran after the football. And they get it at the 50-yard line on the short kickoff, the onside job. Steelers football continues after this timeout. There's a feeling of free. Naturally, now that comfort has found you, you're living and breathing in J. Mar Sons of Bell. Put your man into the feel and free style of J. Mar from Fisher's Department Store in the Pleasant Valley Shopping Center. You're living and breathing in J. Mar Sons of Bell. Arby's of Altoona at 524 West Plank Road. Arby's is a big juicy, fresh wholesome, mean, luscious. Arby's is a big juicy, fresh wholesome, mean, luscious. Arby's is a big juicy, delicious change of pace. Before or after the big game, bring your hungry team in for a delicious meal at Arby's. 524 West Plank Road, Altoona. Arby's second to none. Arby's is a big juicy, fresh wholesome, mean, luscious. Arby's is a big juicy, fresh wholesome, mean, luscious. Arby's is a big juicy, delicious change of pace. 31 to 7 is the score. The Pittsburgh Steelers leading the Atlanta Falcons. Finally, the Falcons came in from 46 yards out against Pittsburgh defensive unit that rather liberally sprinkled with second line men. Now the Falcons have done one of those ushered kickoffs that have become vogue in the NFL. Rules Committee will probably deal with this in the offseason. They escort the ball literally for 10 yards and then pounce on it. And they did a good job. Seattle did it to us. We did it to what? To, to the Cleveland Browns? Let's see who we have in there. Fred Anderson, the rookie from Prairie View. Steve Furness. In the defensive line. Gary Dunn, Tom Beasley. Linebackers are Robin Cole, Dennis Winston with Jack Lambert in the middle. Nat Terry and Larry Anderson, Ron Johnson, and Tony Dungy. Actually, the only uh, real veteran player out there, well, Furness is out there. Furness has been out a couple of three weeks. Here they are, completing the pass. Hitting at the 40-yard line, Wallace Francis, and he wheels down to the 36-yard line, and Dennis Winston makes the stop. So Furness, who has been out of action, hurt. Seven-year veteran is out there. And Lambert, the five-year veteran. And the rest are all very young players. 29th pass thrown by Barkowski. 15th completed. And young Mr. Francis has four catches. The ball is at the Pittsburgh 36-yard line. The crowd is very quiet. 
I think most of them were out in the parking lot celebrating. Started out today, cloudy, dismal looking. The sun came out, and uh, we had sun as the uh, game started. But throughout the afternoon, the sun has given way to the clouds. And it is a chilly day. Temperature never got out of the 50s this afternoon. So a lot of folks have gone out to seek uh, the warmth of their automobiles. Down below, Steve Corson shakes the hand of John Banizak, and Banizak's explaining to him how he got hit, signaling to his head one thing and another. Nobody seems too much concerned about what the Falcons are doing right at the moment, except the coaching staff, and they're out there peering intently. All the coaches have gone down from up above. Double wing formation for Atlanta with a single setback. Barkowski out to the right, then throws back to the left and completes it to the 34-yard line to Mike Esposito, and he is ridden down. Jack Lambert got him. Very short gain on the pass play. Esposito, a third-year running back from Boston College, played up there along with Mike Prusik. That's their 30th pass and their 16th completed. Barkowski goes deep this time to throw and out to the right again to Esposito at the sideline. He steps out of bounds at the 30. They'll make that the 29 and a half. So they go to Esposito on the far side of the field. He gets over beyond the cornerback, Ron Johnson, and the linebacker, Robin Cole, and catches that one. And it is third down and four yards to go. Clock stops on the out-of-bounds play with a minute 11 remaining to play in the ballgame. Steelers and the Falcons. Steelers lead the series 3-1, to one, and this will be their fourth victory in the series. Bartkowski is back there. Let's fly, and nobody down there. His two receivers, Dennis Pearson and James Wright, had not going beyond the 10-yard line, and the pass carried well inside the five, beyond everybody, defensive backs and all, incomplete. Minute six to go, Lauren Taves comes back out on the field. And that will bring Gary Dunn off. Dunn is the second-year man from Miami, who struggled hard to make this club this year and did. All right, they have three wide men. And Bartkowski drops back, and they got him. Lambert, blitzing, nails him back at the 40-yard line. Lambert comes firing through to get the Atlanta quarterback, and that, I have that as the fifth sack, and there may be six. Myron was talking about five before. So it's either five or six sacks. And that was a fourth down play, so the Steelers take over at their own 40, and Mike Kruzik trots out. Randy Grossman, a tight end. T. Bell. Jerry Mullen still out there. There's nobody behind him on the depth chart. Steve Corson in place of Sam Davis. Ray Penny has played all afternoon in place of the injured Larry Brown. Only negative thing to come out of the ballgame, the uh, loss of Benny Cunningham. Here's the handoff to Thornton. Cuts over the left side of the line and plows his way up to the 46-yard line. Picks up six yards on the carry. Ron McCartney, right side linebacker, makes the stop. And they're going to mark the ball at the 45 and a half yard line. Clock turns, 43 seconds to play. So the Falcons came north in hopes of upsetting the Steelers with their staunch defense. And Pittsburgh has played an interesting, most methodical type game. And Bradshaw has had another great day. Kruzik takes it, hands it off to Alvin Maxson. He's running to the right. He needs a little help. He's fumbled the football. It's loose. They scramble for it right below us in front of the Steeler bench. And it's down under a big pileup of jerseys. And Atlanta recovers at the Steeler 39-yard line with four seconds to go. Steelers have given up three or four fumbles. 
So we have four seconds to play. Atlanta gets the ball at the 39-yard line. Six sacks, Luke Freck tells me, the official total for the Steelers. On that pileup for that fumble, an Atlanta player hurt. So the defensive unit is on for one more try. So right now, Larry Brown is out of action. And Benny Cunningham is out indefinitely. Injured players, Tom Moriarty for Atlanta, second-year man from Bowling Green. And the Steeler trainers and the Atlanta trainers bring him to the Steeler bench. They don't even take him to the far side of the field at this stage of the game. Dr. David Huber, Ralph Berlin, looking on with the Atlanta training crew. Time for one more play. Clock will start at the snap, four seconds on the clock. Here's Bartkowski, back there looking. He goes for a long one down toward the end zone. He's going to be caught, maybe. Nope. Over through the whole mob. Put it up for grabs. And a lot of people were down there, defensive and offensive people. And Pearson had a shot for it. Rickman had a shot for it. And it sailed over the head of everybody. Incomplete. And that winds up the ball game. Unusual game. We wind up with an injured Atlanta player on the Pittsburgh bench. And the Steelers giving up just seven points in the ball game, adding 31 to their total on the season, get their sixth win of the campaign against no losses. And the Atlanta Falcons, who came in here off a win over the New York Giants, see their record drop to two and four. The injured Atlanta player is still getting care down on the Steeler bench, and they brought a stretcher out. And Tom Moriarty. What would you say, J.D.? It looks like either an arm or a shoulder. And I think just uh, for the sake of comfort alone, they, they're going to let him get on the stretcher, and rather than walk that distance to the dressing room, why they will, they will take him over there. That's a shame. That was the next to last play of the game, and the injury came on a big scramble for a fumble. We're at the end of the ball game at Three Rivers Stadium. The final score, the Pittsburgh Steelers 31, the Atlanta Falcons 7. I'll be back with Steelers wrap up in a minute. Fine afternoon for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Franco Harris had another 100-yard-plus day, 104 yards rushing. Steelers unofficially 27 first downs, Atlanta 20. Bradshaw threw 18 passes. Completed 13, had no interceptions. Swan had a 37-yard reception. Stalwer had a 70-yard reception. He ran better than half that distance with the football. Markowski threw 33, completed 17, had two intercepted. One by Mel Blunt, one by Lauren Caves. Markowski sacked six times, and Mike Kruzik sacked once after he came on to relieve Terry in the fourth quarter. Pittsburgh penalized 58 yards, Atlanta 55. The Steelers, one negative note there, gave up three of four fumbles. Atlanta gave up two of three. Let's pause now for station identification. This is WVAM-FM El Tuna, Country FM 100. Now back to Steeler Football 78. Are the scoring. Jarella put Pittsburgh on the board. The Steelers took the opening kickoff, maintained the ball nine minutes and 58 seconds. Started at their own 12, went 85 yards and 18 plays, stopped at the Atlanta three and a half. Jarella kicked a 21 yard field goal. Fritz Steinfort missed a couple today. 34 yard attempt in the first quarter was no good. He had a 31 yard attempt in the third quarter, no good. Steelers drove 80 yards in the second period. Big play, a pass, 37-yarder to Swan. Blyer scored from eight yards out. And also in the second period, the Steelers went 61 yards in six plays. Two big penalties against Atlanta in that series. A 16-yard pass to Grossman was a major play. Bradshaw rolled left six yards for the TD. 17 to nothing at the half. The third quarter, 80-yard drive, five plays. 
70-yard pass to Stallworth, took it down to the two-yard line. Blyer went over from the two, and it was 24 to nothing. In the fourth quarter, Taves intercepted. Pittsburgh 30. Steelers went 70 yards in eight plays. Key plays were passes to Stallworth and Swan. Touchdown and 11-yarder to Stallworth. It's 31 to nothing. And then with 203 remaining, and with a defensive lineup largely made up of reserves, the Atlanta Falcons drove 46 yards in seven plays and scored on a 12-yard pass to Francis, who beat Ron Johnson in the end zone, and it was 31 to 7. Crowd this afternoon, 48,202. The weather, part-time sunny, part-time cloudy. Temperature always in the 40s. So a chilly afternoon, but a fine football game. Great victory for the Steelers. Lou Crick and J.D. Fogarty covering both clubs for us. Our producer, Tom Leslie. Final score again, Pittsburgh 31, Atlanta 7. I'm Jack Fleming at Three Rivers Stadium. Bob Coppler is next with Pro Football Report on the Steelers Football Network.